apologize, but you know, as I was in my got into my car, the plow went uh, at the end of my driveway. I had to get out and clear, so I couldn't get out. Oh, don't worry about it. Uh, just leave my hands. I should have been doing? handy yeah, up out earlier. Um, I'll call the delegation meeting to order. The county, county convention. Sorry. Almost by that. Could we have a moment of silence while we're standing for the Pledge of Allegiance for John Leckenbach, who's been building bus for six years? I was going to do that. Right after the pledge. Okay. Yeah. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Standing, please, and have a moment of silence for John Ruckabrod, who's videotaping these uh, commissioner meetings and the delegation meetings for about six years now. Thank you. was um, at the end of the revenues for the Department of Public Works. Uh, it was left off the last motion. Should be Tom Bucco moved and Susan Tyser seconded to recommend the revenue estimate of a total of $37,002 for farm income. The motion passed to 2 to 0. Any other errors or omissions? Okay. Then, um, all those in favor of accepting the minutes? As corrected. Yes. As correct. Aye. 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 All those opposed? The next item of business is to discuss the uh, budget. And, um, did you want to draft? Yes. Oh, okay. Mr. Mason, yes. on the budget and the agenda, you have to have performance audit draft. Okay. Um, yes. Well, that, that's actually part of the budget. Um, oh. That's okay for, for my for my I'm sorry. Um, 
You are all aware that we have been had a, a performance audit that has been in process. And there are a couple of items on that performance audit that um, have come up before, and they are still there, and they are regarding um, the staffing for some of our operations. And one thing that I just um, would like to say about it, we have, we've only seen a draft, and, and it, it is getting closer, and it is going to be going out to everybody very soon. Um, but what two of the recommendations, one is the, the staffing and more help for our, our finance office, for our controller, and, um, and as we heard from the auditor, um, she also had concerns about our being understaffed in that area and um, without the required support for that. And it is something that um, we, we really are going to need to address. I feel, and I don't know how we're going to address it at this point, um, but it is something we need, we definitely need to get help. I mean, we have all felt that we're not getting able to get the reports and things in a timely fashion that we need to feel comfortable to make our decisions, and we know we have good people who are working as hard as they can, but it's, I think we're expected to be impossible. So I want to bring that item up. Um, so. That is one issue. The other issue that has come up repeatedly and has been a concern, I know it's been a concern of mine since I've been in this position, um, is the lack of an HR person, a professional HR person who can be in charge of overall to, to, to do the, the work of making sure all of our policies, all of our compliances, everything is working together and to have an independent an independent way of staff members to be able to get answers and to work through issues that arise. And we have, again, we kind of dispersed a lot of it, and some of those, some, we gained some things from doing that, but we've also lost some things. So I don't have the answers now, but before we start the um, budget, what I would like to suggest and I'd like to talk about is the possibility of setting aside a contingency. Um, maybe, of, I know, I, I look, our people did a very good job of not spending down our department heads, and we have some money that is left over from this past year. And I'm wondering, we have the ability to set up a contingency fund, I understand, under the RSAs up to 1%, but I wanted to set aside $100,000 of the unspent 2018 funds to consider that as we're looking at the budget. Um, to fund the staffing and updating of the technology to address the performance audit organizational concerns with the specific item approval of the delegation before any of it is spent. But I would just like to put that out there and see what people think. Because um, I think we, obviously nothing is going to happen tomorrow. Uh, the audit is almost done and we will be getting it our next meeting. I'm sure we're going to be discussing the whole thing in detail. But. I'm thinking as we do our budget, as we might say, we may never use the contingency, but I would just like to, as we do the 2019 budget, that we might put something there so it's possible to, to move forward with it. So what are people's thoughts? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would propose that uh, now that the draft copy is out, and we should, of course, make sure everybody has, has gone through it, but I would propose, like Matrix Corp did last time, is they came and they presented. Mm -hmm. the I've findings. invited them to do that. And, oh, you have? Yes. Okay. Then that's perfect. I approve yes. that. Okay. But, but <laughs> what, I, I, what I want to do is because we're approving, hopefully approving much of the budget today, that we keep in mind we could have, have an expense to, to do that. And because I would not want to have to wait until the 2020 budget. I would like to maybe do something by July. Yes, Representative Butler. Um, you said uh, that this contingency would come out of uh, surplus. Where? Or, well, I'm just. It's, it's open to so where people. I mean, some of you are much better at the budget than I am. I'm fairly new to it. So. And how much is there in a surplus that has not been spent down that could be used in a contingency? It was what around two hundred thousand, isn't it? That we. 
Oh, sorry. What was but the question? I looked at this year, the, our, the 2018 budget. <coughs> we did not. We had a lot of our, all of our depart, pretty much all of our departments were under budget and spent. Yeah, about two million. It was two million. Mm -hmm. So, so I thought a hundred thousand was not a. Yes, Mr. Madam Chair, um, I think that I will be more prepared to make an informed decision on this once we've gone through the budget and we've seen what our total expenses are and our projected revenues and um, how much we need to raise from taxes um, as well as this. I think we need to look at the whole picture. I need to look at the whole picture before I can make a decision. Yes, Representative Butler. Thank you. Um, I'm thinking that if we do this, that $100,000 may not be enough. And um, that I think there are several questions uh, following on your points for finance office and HR. Um, relative to the finance office, don't we have a new position in administration in this budget? Uh, I believe so. I believe we... We yes. do, but I believe that the the issue is is I think that is like another assistant. It, it's not a person with the, <coughs> with the capabilities and the professional preparation to be able to understand the finances to be someone who could provide better support for our controller and to to be to shadow so that the two because you when you have an operation of any size to run efficiently you need two people who can do everything. The children's center, I called it the hit by the truck policy. <laughs> everybody, every every critical operation had two people who could do it right and do it well. And I think that it's something that the auditor picked up as a concern. And and I think we're expecting too much of our people and it's not going to go away. <clears throat> However our budget ends out, it's not the problem is not going to go away. And follow up? Yes. Um, on the HR position, um, I guess I agree uh, uh, with Representative Ticehurst that this uh, follow-up discussion on this will, will be better uh, done when we know what's happening in all of the uh, budgets because in the nursing home, we have an additional HR person um, in the budget. So it will be... Okay, so we can look in the whole picture. Exactly. Um, thank you. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm coming into this late, but um, uh, I think it is uh, critical that we have an HR director. Um, that is an entirely different set of qualifications than another person to uh, uh, deal with payroll, uh, etc. Um, I think it's evident from what has been going on in the county. Um, that an HR director is, uh, is required. It was something that was um, uh, brought up in the 2014 uh, performance audit, as was the finance manager, that both were critical positions. And um, I, think, uh, I think there have to be adjustments made to the budget, but I think it's critical that both of those uh, positions be included in the budget. Yes. Um, my own opinion is, is I read that and I disagree with most of what they said um, in the matrix audit. Um, he was here 45 minutes. He has no idea of what, what our HR needs are. He basically has no idea of, of, about our finance office. So, um, you know, it's up to myself and the commission to decide what we need, not the delegation. If, if we come forward to the delegation and, and if we need an HR director or um, an administrative assistant, we will come forward and, and request that uh, and those positions. At this time, um, we had a plan in place in 2018, which was nixed by the delegation, which sent us into what we have now. Um, we have a perfectly good finance director sitting next to me. Uh, we have uh, Cheryl, who's been doing bookkeeping the past two years. Um, and without an administrative assistant, the, the, the workload is just too great. So, you know, um, we've already made the plan. We've come forward with the plan. Um, and uh, we will continue to move forward as we are now. Um, whether the delegation wants us to get it or not, 
Unfortunately, it's not up to the delegation. It's up to the commissioners. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think uh, I take issue with that. It is up to the delegation because we um, established the appropriations mm -hmm. um, in the budget. So it is up to the delegation and not to the administrator. But I, I'm not going to argue with you. I mean, the, the commissioners spend the money, and if it's there, if they want to spend it, they'll spend it. If not, they don't have to spend it. Right. Right. So any further discussion? Well, I think we can look. Yes. Uh, just, I, I didn't know how much you got into the performance audit, but I think um, one of the things that uh, jumped out to me also was the uh, bank reconciliation um, uh, criticism in here. That's something that we've heard since 2014 from uh, their performance audit back then, from DRA, from financial management. Um, bank reconciliations um, are, are not being done, and they're not being done um, in the proper manner. Um, the burden placed on department heads um, to do this um, is not right, and it shouldn't be a department head responsibility uh, to do bank reconciliations because they're um, uh, doing um, the ordering and uh, placing the um, orders, and so they shouldn't be the ones doing the bank reconciliation. It should be someone other than the department head, um, as was pointed out in the performance audit. I would just like to say, I know since I have been on the delegation, there have been issues. And um, I think that it has come up and it came up with the, with the, both with the auditor about the importance of having somebody who can, having somebody, or having two people who can do the important tasks and having run a much smaller organization and knowing that was truly important. And I see this as a, much larger operation and to have some of these major tasks not centralized and and protected i i think for the right for the good of the county and for our accountability that we need these to be um, to be well done and also for the health and the well-being of our people who are trying to do it i think it needs to be done I think we should at least look at it, and I think we should provide for it, and when we do the audit, we can discuss it then. And I think it's not just their 45 minutes here. I think that they they took information from people. They looked at our organization, and they looked at the size and the numbers and that of, of what we're dealing with. And, you know, we're, what, 30 something million, million dollars, and we're asking a couple of people to be dealing with that. It's, it's a lot. Yes. I'm just curious if uh, the uh, commissioners have the say in what this what happens here, and uh, they go ahead and give somebody a contract for two three years. What happens? Can they do that, or can they just say we found somebody, we're going to sign a two year contract, you're stuck with it, so that we're locked out of making any real decision? I'm sorry, are you talking about for, for people that we hire for That's these correct. positions? So perhaps the commissioners can answer that? What, what do the commissioners feel? I'm sorry, I just got here. I apologize. I had baby lambs born this morning. I had to take care of. Um, I'm not sure what your question was. My question was, it was mentioned by uh, Ken that um, the commissioners have the power to hire somebody, et cetera, et cetera. We do the money, they can hire somebody. So let us say that you go ahead as commissioners and do hire somebody for one of these positions. Do, does that, let's say, outwit or out, what we're looking for, what the delegation might feel because they signed a three-year contract with somebody and we really didn't have a say on it. So can you outdo us by doing that? You can. Yes, the, the, the commissioner is hired. And who would, so you, uh, so if you hired somebody with that and at the end of next year's budget or the beginning of it, we don't see that as a go for some reason, we're stuck. 
Mm, no, you can just reduce, reduce the budget. Yeah. But you could then maneuver the money from somewhere sure. else. Well, no. It has to stay within that line. That's true. Um, it would be it would be my hope that if, if we were to to especially when we get this performance audit and go over it in detail together, that we would see what is recommended right. to be needed. And I think we would talk and talk and work with the, the staff and see what they feel. And to get I think the commissioners would do that. And then with the resources provided by us, we'd be able to respond to that and hire what is needed. I mean, I certainly trust our commissioners and our administrator to, to know, you know what is needed. Yes? I just want to ask Ken a question. <clears throat> it's my understanding, can you, you haven't requested any of these positions in this year's budget. Yes. Well, the hundred thousand dollars. Have you requested the full time? No, no, no. Okay. If you, as the administrator, were given that money by the delegation, would you go and hire uh, a director of human resources? No, the, no. Okay. Yes, I want to support what you just said. I mean, the reason that you get an outside person to look at something is to get somebody who's independent from the delegation, independent from the commissioners who gives that outside eye, and there's a value to that. And I think it probably doesn't make a lot of sense to bring them in. We don't always have to take all your consultants' advice. We should certainly have a good reason not to take advice if somebody is, has expertise in it and has come and spent the time. Because the hope is that they come in with open eyes and without any um, potential conflicts that might guide their decision that would, that would guide our decision, and they can get that advice. So I think we should certainly pay very close attention to what they say. We probably will need to do it after we see the full report. But I like your idea of protecting some money to have something available, not to have to wait till next year's budget cycle. Yes, Representative Adeline. Well, the discussion has been enlightening, um, if there was any changes to the budget after we pass it, there is a mechanism if they wish to hire anybody to come back and ask for a supplemental budget to fund those positions before next year's budget, which I think would be a very wise choice for this delegation given the context of the discussion this morning. Sounds good. Okay. Could I just ask, um, what would that affect if we if we set the tax rate with the towns and that? Would we have the, the finances available? Within the within the budget to be able to do that, <coughs> that would be my question. Or you're asking me. Well, I'm asking someone who might know. <laughs> so, I, I, know. I mean, I know. <laughs> happy to know. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, you're happy to know. So enlighten um, those the, of us who don't. The supplemental budget is typically done in September. Um, the tax rate is done in October. So we would have to have the budget, and I'm pretty sure it's 30 days before. Um, whenever DRA deems the, to have the tax rates done. Typically for the towns it's October, which means the county budget needs to be in by September. So sometime before that, those the, whatever date that they've set so far. So if if, they, if we had the funds, if we had have get this report and we want to do something, say starting July 1st, we would not be able to do it. They would not be able to do it until September. No, just yes. clarification, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, we would not be able to do anything. If the supplemental budget no. would have to come from the commissioners up, not the top yes. down. If, if so, if they the requested same question. a supplemental, if they requested budget, a supplemental <coughs> we would have to wait until September. No, we have to have it done by September, just like we did a few years ago. Okay, I wasn't here. Thank you, Madam yes. Chair. Just for information, it usually takes me about an hour to explain how the budgeting process works, but really, really quickly. Um, we are, we, uh, after the commissioners have submitted their recommendations, we are required to um, approve a budget by uh, the end of March. Um, we can ask for a supplemental amount after that point, but it isn't until fall that the DRA, Department of Revenue Administration, sets the tax rate and the mechanism continues and the bills go out to the towns to collect that money, and we don't, the county doesn't get that money until um, 
December 17th. Thank you. <laughs> December 17th. So we actually run almost a whole year without actually getting the money, which is why we do the um, either the TAN, the um, tax anticipation note, whether it's fine. I won't get into the details of how to do that. So we can't, in the short is we can um, change our budget up until that point when the DRA sets its, the tax rate and sends that information to the towns to do their billing. I hope that's helpful. So, if I could? Yes. Um, so, just for uh, clarification and reinforcement then, even though we passed this budget uh, at the end of March, um, uh, the supplemental will go into that budget so that the tax rate that is set um, will be one tax rate, not the one for the March budget and another one for a supplemental when if we do it. Thank you. For me, if we wanted, if this commissioners, if the majority of the commissioners were to decide that they wanted to act on these, when we get that report, that they still would be able to to do it within this budget that we are passing now. Yes. Or would they have to wait until they would not have to wait? Okay, that's what I want to be clear. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I guess we move on to the next order of business is to is to start working on the budget. If I pass out some information, general sure. information about the budget. <coughs> budgeted and the actual uh, expenditures to see the difference. And you can see that um, prior to 2015, um, the uh, budgeting was um, a lot uh, tighter, if you will say, a lot closer to what the actual um, expenditures were for the year. Um, since that point, since 2015, um, we've been running five, six, and then now close to eight percent above what was um, uh, actually spent versus what was budgeted. Um, uh, and you can see in 2018 that is using the supplemental budget figure that was done in uh, September. Um, and um, so my thought is that we are over budgeting, we are over taxing our citizens, in effect. And the one other document that I'll pass out um, looks at the budgets in a slightly different way. It looks at the actual budget for the prior year as compared to what is being budgeted for the current year, which I consider to be the real spending increase. Um, and you can see here, um, continued over um, into the, uh, the second page, the back page, um, for 2018, we're looking at uh, a real spending increase of uh, almost 10 percent between the 2017 actual expenditures and was what was budgeted for 2018. But now we're looking at 
for this current budget, the expenditures for 2018 were 29.4 million, as compared to what the uh, commissioners have presented, is um, a 3.6 million dollar increase over what was spent last year, or 12, almost 12.4 percent increase uh, in spending. Or proposed for 2019 over what was spent in 2018. Um, so I, I think, um, to me, it is clear that we have to do um, a better job of budgeting um, compared to what we uh, actually need to spend. Uh, because all of this um, is uh, being passed on to our taxpayers in Carroll County. Thank you. Uh, yes. I just have a question on the first uh, sheet you passed out, Representative. When in 18 did we have a supplemental budget? There was a supplemental budget done in, um, uh, in September, I believe, that was, well, I've got a copy of it from the DRA. Not in 2018, maybe in 2015. No, in 2018, there was a supplemental budget that increased it um, to the uh, 31730 figure that included, I believe, a union raise as well as um, the Siemens, or, excuse me, the uh, pro share money that we sent back to the state. It was required that we had to do it via supplemental budget um, to. That came out add of fund balance, though. Uh, a supplemental budget was required. There was also and, one and I'd be I'd be glad to send you a copy of uh, well, the, uh, the MS forty two that I got from DRA that was signed by the commissioners. The mm -hmm. order. Uh, yes. Everything should go through you. There should be a cross section between. Uh, and I would impress everybody to be respectful. Thank you. Not why I have any authority to tell you that. But that's all well. <laughs> Thank you. Right. I appreciate that. Yes, Mr. Robichaud. So, there was a supplemental budget in 2015, too, of, of uh, 2.3 million. Mm -hmm. Right. Is that in this figure, too, in uh, 2015? I, I believe it is. I think that's. Um, I think that's what is reflected on these sheets. Excuse me. It, is it my understanding from what you just said that that it was a technical? This was a technical thing that had to be applied for because of the Crochet and Return of Funds and not our request for a supplemental budget for another purpose, for additional purposes on our budget. If I might, um, yes. I think when we discussed with Human Services, Health and Human Services, when they were here, um, I think the discussion was because there had to be an appropriation to send the money back to the state as an expense. Um, that there had to be a supplemental budget um, to reflect um, the changes in appropriations. Okay, thank you. But we were not, we, we had approved pro share participation. So, but this was not an additional cost to the county. This was an investment we were making to increase the money that we would be receiving. So this was a, a technical exchange. It was, we, would, we were not looking at our budgets and putting we need more money and, and, and adding to it. So I, I personally would look at that in a different way than I would look at as our going, saying we did not do a good job with our budgeting, so therefore we must do it differently. It was contracts. The contracts. It was the contracts. Okay. okay. Mr. Butler. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just want to uh, thank uh, the representative for uh, putting this information together. I think it's useful. Um, and uh, I think that you know, as we are going through our budgeting process, um, we are looking at the actual uh, expenses of last year and the requested monies and trying to be as reasonable and responsible as possible. Um, I think it is still difficult to um, to know, and uh, we have to trust 
uh, our administrators and the people uh, helping to put together the budget, um, that we are getting as close to the bone as possible without um, uh, without being unreasonable and making sure that we have the, uh, uh, the amounts necessary in order to function. So um, I think this is useful and something that we should uh, use as a guide. <coughs> Agree, but making a budget is a guesstimate at best. We, we try to do our best with the information that we have. So, and, and so, in respect for the committees who have been working on this, uh, I think we should can move forward. Uh, so, do you want to go line item, or do you want to go by department and see if what concerns are within those lines? So, does everyone have their budget? Thank you. I was I was hoping that we would be presented at least with the latest one. It may have been emailed, but there was an issue for me, so I don't know. No, I, I, this, what you have is what we have. What, what I have one from two from February eighth. Does everyone have that? So we do. Someone had an extra copy of that eight. Uh, no. So I have mine on, on my computer, and so... Uh, I think there's some in the top drawer over there. I'd be happy to share my copy of that. No. Up in the next room. Transfer sub in the transfer committee, we transferred sixty five hundred dollars into that line for a sick time buyback. Are there any further questions about the commission's budget? Yes. Um, I understand that there are approximately nine new positions in the budget is one of them in uh, the commissioner's budget. Yes. And we have some follow-up as to what that okay. is. If we have anything in the budget. Yes, there is. Okay. The administrative assistant. Okay. <coughs> yes, sir. Um, could you give us some uh, details as to the uh, amount of that salary and when um, that uh, is uh, slated to begin in terms of the salary? Yes. Yes. Madam Chair, yes. um, 
the uh, subcommittee that dealt with the commissioner's budget, um, I would like to hear their answer uh, on these lines, not necessarily having to um, grill the administrator or the commissioners uh, at least first time around. Well, it, it was my understanding, this is a, a position that's been really very, very deeply needed for a long time, and, and there have been some real issues of understaffing in that office, which have been recognized by our auditors, as well as by the commissioners, and those of us who have tried to get reports and information out of the office. Um, so I, I think we're all pretty familiar with the need and the issue, and the committee, I'm sure, the committee discussing and and they're comfortable. Yes. Yeah, we discussed this in the subcommittee, and if I could ask a question of procedure, are we going to start the budget at the top of the commissioner's budget, or are we going on to Representative Butler's sections of the bu of budget because he is the leader? Well, I am, I am going to move to him, but I was going to start with the commissioner's budget. Commissioner's I'm looking for an answer to this question, and so if we can get it, we can pass the commissioner's budget. And the commissioner's budget does include the administrative assistant, as was approved by the subcommittee. And if you'd like me to make a motion on the commissioner's budget, I will do so. Okay. Further um, question? Yes. Um, dues, licenses, and, and subscriptions, um, on, is that the line in which the uh, New Hampshire Association of Counties um, is included, the membership costs? Is or is there a different line? Did you? Yes, Representative. I'm sorry, Madam Chair, I can't answer that question, but I'm wondering who, if you would remind me, who it was on the committee that dealt with this budget? Um, it was President Cordelli was there. Yep. Representative Marsh, Representative um, Butler, Representative and, and Representative Chancellor. And follow-up? Yes. Who, who is the chair of that committee? I was. Okay, thank you. Okay. That's why I asked if you'd like me to make a motion. Yes. So, if, but you did, the, the committee did go through all of these lines. Yes, I believe the committee discussed issues. all these line items in sufficient detail, and uh, therefore, in order to move this process along, so we're not here all day, because I do have a meeting I have to go to this afternoon, uh, I would move the commissioner's budget in the amount of $1,073,272, as reflected by the uh, spreadsheets that we've been testing. Is there a session? Okay. Further discussion? I was just wondering if I could give an answer to my question about the New Hampshire Association of the County's um, dues. Is there an answer to that question? Yes. Yes. The answer is yes. And you were there, I told you, and, and you're asking again. Oh, okay. so. This is something. Point, the point of order. Is there is there a, an issue with this? Because I yes, think cost off, Madam Chair. Yes, the cost off. Questions to come to you. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Um, yes. Based on the uh, information that I just got, that had been requested back in uh, January, um, it lists the uh, dues owed by each county to the New Hampshire Association of Counties, and I found it very interesting that Carroll County's dues assessment. Um, is higher than that of Belknap County and Cheshire County, both who have more residents than uh, Carroll County, and uh, only one third higher is in terms of dues is Merrimack County, um, who has um, uh, at least no, let's see, four or five times the population. Of Carroll County. So I'm just wondering um, about the dues that are being assessed to Carroll County. Thank yes. you, Madam Chair. I just would like to ask Representative Cordelli if when he got that information, he inquired as to how those dues were assessed. Um, I believe we uh, just got this information um, Friday. So rather than to hold up the budget for this issue, would it be, wouldn't it be appropriate if we just requested that our, our administrator contact them and, and check into that issue for us? So I don't think it's... I, I can answer right now. It's done by assessment. So same as everything else. 
I'm, I'm sorry, assessment of of the evaluation of the evaluation of the, of the town's evaluate tax evaluation. Okay, thank you. <coughs> so, are there further questions? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my notes indicate that we're expecting a change in the rate for medical insurance sometime in March, and that would be a reduction. May we ask someone on the commission or committee or administrator if we have any current information on that yet? The, the number that, that, that I gave you is, is, is the number. Thank you. <clears throat> any further questions? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, uh, in the past, we've always gotten um, a detailed um, by department breakdown of the new equipment we requested. Um, I don't believe we have that um, for the uh, commissioner's office and the $4,000 uh, being uh, requested. $1,500. Did I say $4,000? I'm sorry. Um, that was the uh, 2018 budget. $1,500 in 2019. Can you clarify it? Um, I gave it to I gave it to the to the committee. I, don't, I mean, everyone was there. So this has um, been. <coughs> yes. So this has been this has been reviewed. So. Um, okay. I think we can probably. Um, if, if there are no further questions, I think I think that these have been some of these questions have been vetted by the committee. And I don't know if we have to go item by item. Um, so let's, we, we, have a, we have a motion made and seconded to accept $1,073,272. Um, we have a motion and a second. Um, can I have a, all those in favor? Oh, would you like to do, we'll do a roll call. Sorry. Roll call, please. Representative Tyson. Yes. Clark will be voting no. Representative 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 Butler. Aye. Representative Como. Nay. Representative Cordelli. No. Representative Crawford. Yes. Representative Knark. Yes. Representative McDonald. Yes. Representative Marsh. Yes. Representative Nelson. No. Representative Woodcock. Yes. Representative Excuse me, and the chair. Yes. Eight to four. Thank you. The motion carries. Move on to the treasurers. And this is this also in your Yes. Yes, I would Mark. move that we adopt uh, the uh, subcommittee's budget of. Uh, $8,613 um, as approved by the Is there a second? Yes. Representative, second motion. Um, is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the vote, please. Representative Tyshurst. Yay. Clerk will be voting yes. Ooh. Representative Butler. Aye. Representative Como? Aye. Representative Cordelli? Yes. Representative Crawford? Yes. Representative Knark? Yes. Representative McDonald? Yes. Representative Marsh? Yes. Representative Nelson? Yes. And the chair. Uh, Representative Woodcock? Yes. And the chair? Yes. Unanimous. Special fees and services. Uh, yes, let me get to that line on my uh, spreadsheet here. I would move that we approve the subcommittee's amount uh, for special fees of services of uh, $534,176. Mm -hmm. We, we uh, made a change at the, at the last meeting, and the correct number is uh, 559176, 
uh, dollars and no cents. The difference being that we had to add $25,000 for the cost to the state for the roundabout uh, down the street here. Get that number again. Do the number again. 559176. 559176. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second. Thank you. Okay, is there a discussion? Is that was Representative Crawford? Yes. Is that a line item number? It's not the double yeah. uh, 412? 4102? 4102. 498. 498, thank you. Yes, Is that a new line item on a new uh, from our old sheets? Yes, uh, we, we did that at the last meeting. Thank you. Yes, what are we calling that one? About? Uh, state roundabout. Thank you. It's 4102098, is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion? Okay, Representative Crawford seconded. Is there further discussion? Yes, Representative Crawford. I would like to uh, propose an amendment uh, to reduce that figure by $25,000 um, for the uh, citizens of East Side being removed. What line is that? That is, um, is it uh, 4102.044? Yes. I'll second. And the elder assisted living study you want to reduce by what? Twenty-five thousand dollars. Remove it. Remove it. Remove it. Remove it. And we have a second. I second it. We have a second. Is there discussion? Good question. Yes. Uh, Chairman, can I just get some explanation from either the committee chair or the administrator on the the rationale for that and the impact of that, please? Yes. <coughs> Yes, uh, this this motion was it uh, proposed at the subcommittee level and um, failed for lack of a second at the subcommittee. And the representative certainly has the right to pursue his uh, amendment here if he so desires. But uh, can you explain what it's about? Uh, the elder assisted living study is, was proposed initially last year to look into whether it would be feasible uh, for the county to become involved in some way in having uh, assisted living um, and be able to have it not exceed 50% Medicaid, such that it would be something that we could do in a fiscally responsible manner. Um, and this is proposed by the commissioners in their budget to pursue this. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative Myers, so is the recommendation of the committee to maintain that in the budget as presented? Uh, yes, that money was included in the uh, motion from the subcommittee, which I brought forward here. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you. Uh, I believe that last year when this was brought forward to the uh, delegation, um, the amount requested was either ten or fifteen thousand dollars, and is now up to twenty-five thousand dollars. Um, I, I think that we also heard last year that um, there was uh, no known assisted living facility that had um, been successful with a 50% Medicaid uh, reimbursement level. Yes. What we're looking for with the assisted living funding is that we believe, of course, there's a, there's a crisis in assisted living in terms of lack of availability. Um, to address Representative Cordelli's point, we have three examples in the state where 100% uh, Medicaid uh, has, has proven to be successful, and that being in Rockingham, Cheshire, and at Merrimack. So it, it can be done, but we're looking at conservatively is to test the waters, to get the financial, to get independent analysis to whether it could work at the 50% level. We've reduced the scope and scale Rather than looking at essentially two projects, one being in the Mount Washington Valley, we're looking at what could be done here on this campus in a way that by sharing the fixed cost could actually reduce our cost per day for the nursing home as well. So it's a, this year is, is, a, is a more comprehensive analysis because it's financially based, but it's also a more limited scope. 
Representative Butler. Thank you, Madam Chair. Carroll County is the oldest county in the state. Um, we are one of the oldest states in the union. Um, and uh, a need for assisted living is something that uh, has been plaguing this county for a long time. Um, I believe last year the 10000 uh, proposal was going to be matched by a $10,000 uh, contribution um, uh, or fu uh, fundraising. Um, that is not uh, a part of this proposal now, and I think this amount is reasonable for um, such an important need. I would hope that the delegation would support it. Thank you, Madam Chair. He's probably the oldest person on this committee. On this delegation. <laughs> yeah. um, Don't bet on it. My, <laughs> my concern would be why on earth would you put this in Ossipi? Nothing against Ossipi. But putting it here where you're not near anything for the people that would live in this facility, they've got to go so far if it was in a better location for being able to do things to get out of <clears> it. <throat> rather than have to travel such a long distance. That is my concern, the location. Yes, Representative I don't think a location has been set. The idea of this is to do a study to figure out what could we do and where should it be done. So I don't think that this is a set location. If I could. Yes, Representative um, Butler. We have a campus that is underutilized. Um, and uh, I think there is the possibility of uh, having access from, what is that, 28, um, to this campus, um, which would make it a little more accessible. Um, and uh, the use of the land, which is currently underutilized, might be a very smart use uh, for assisted living if the proposal came in at anything that made uh, any sense at all. Um, I think it's something well worth considering, and um, as Representative Kirk said, there are certainly other options. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this would be, we discussed this the last couple of years, this would be, a, if it happens to be here, would be attached to the current nursing home, would add beds, as a sense of living beds to the nursing home, and you would be able to share some costs between Cafeteria, staffing, nursing, utilities would be, you know, split up a little bit, and it would be not easier, but a little faster turnover on beds if there's somebody that is in assisted living that would need a bed in the nursing home in their last few weeks of their life. We presently have 103 beds, and that's the most we can ever have. 103 nursing home beds is at the very low end. To be efficient, to maximize our fixed costs, our overhead, we'd do much better at 150. Assisted living would give us that kind of efficiency. And to address, you know, to you know, Representative Nelson's point, it would be better if we were looking for a private pay, we would need to go to Wolfboro or Conway. But we're talking about Medicaid, people who come to a quality environment because it's not otherwise available anywhere within the county. There's one little place in Tamworth that has that has about 14 beds of Medicaid eligible uh, assisted living. People will travel, same as they do from Mountain View now, if it's quality service at something that's affordable. Thank you. Yes, Representative Butler. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think sometimes when we make decisions, we need to make them on a very specific, detailed level. But sometimes we also need to take into account the overall costs of health care in the county, and I see assisted living as being a less expensive alternative than some of the other options. So I think that will weigh into my decision when I vote. Yes, Madam Chair, I've supported <laughs> assisted living from the beginning. And the reason I do so is because I believe it will protect the taxpayers for us to do this, which I know Representative Cordelli disagrees with me about. However, insofar as we can keep people who have some resources in assisted living and their resources can last for a longer period of life, 
then we are able to keep them off the Medicaid rolls. When, if they have no other alternative but to go into their nursing home, their resources become depleted, and then they become a burden on the taxpayers as Medicaid patients. Uh, so I think that by enabling more options for people in that uh, category in this county, we will actually be protecting our taxpayers, and, and therefore I will continue to support this. Okay, I think we've covered much covered this. The motion on the floor is to remove the $25,000 from the vote. So if you vote aye, you are voting, to, uh, you vote yes, you are voting to remove it. If you vote no, you are voting to maintain this line item. So we will call the roll. Sure. On the amendment to remove $25,000, Representative Tice Rice. Right. Cook and voting yes. Uh, Representative Butler? No. Representative Como? Aye. Representative Cordelli? Yes. Representative Crawford? No. Representative Donald? No. Representative Knack? No. Representative Marsh? No. Representative Nelson? Yes. Representative Woodcock? No. Did you ask me? And the chair? No. So the motion on the floor goes back to um, accepting the amount of $559,176 for the special fees and services. Services at 559176. First motion by Representative Marsh, seconded by Representative Crawford. Representative Tyson. Aye. Representative uh, Quick will be voting yes. Representative Butler. Yes. Representative Como. No. Representative Cordelli. No. Representative Crawford. Yes. Representative Dem uh, Knack. Yes. Representative McDonald? Yes. Representative Marsh? Yes. Representative Nelson? No. And Representative Tyke, uh, excuse me, Representative Woodcock? Yes. And the chair? Yes. The next item on the agenda is the attorney, uh, the county attorney, and the amount submitted is $646,212. I have a motion to open the discussion. So move, Madam Chair. A second? I'll second this. Okay, thank you. Is there further discussion? Any questions on the agenda tonight? Yes. Are uh, the chair of this committee? It is, um, is Representative Bruco, and he is not here today. So, do we have the recommendation from the budget committee? I mean, um, that they approve? Yes, we good. have approved it, but um, Representative Bruco asked me to make sure that um, when we put in for the clothing allowance, that that be declared an accountable as under an accountable plan, as well as um, 100-411073, that that also be the $1,200 be declared and account, be posted as an accountable plan, it, which has different tax implications, well, what I understand. Yes. Uh, not only that, um, um, unfortunately, the county attorney can't get reimbursed for her vehicle. Uh, for, you know, she can't utilize the $100 a month for uh, non-reimbursable because it's part of a compensation which should have been set back in before the election, as well as the, the county clothing, the, the county attorney clothing for $500. It can be a reimbursable expense, 
but it can't be part of her compensation. Okay, so we, we, it could be used as a reimbursable yes. expense. Yep. Okay. Just, just as it is now. Okay. This is, I'm just going notes that I received mm -hmm. from Representative Bucco. Um, I have another question that I am concerned as a member of the committee. We tried to deal with an, an issue of um, maintaining the positions in the county attorney office of the assistant attorneys uh, because of our, our pay rates are low and we haven't have had an open position for a period of time that, that has been unable to be filled. And I am wondering if, if given that, that situation without increasing our bottom line on this bill, if we might consider um, increasing the salary for the assisting attorneys by $2,000 as those positions have been unfilled for a period of time, the money is in the budget to do that. If we could rate, increase the salaries and it might help us to find someone to take that open position because our county attorneys, our assisting attorneys, are working way over caseloads that are ethically, ethically, um, I don't understand, but the county attorney could probably explain it better than I, but I am concerned about that, and and I really would like to, us to be able to find someone to fill that open position. Would you like to explain that? You can do it much better than I can. Sure. Thank you so much. Thanks for letting me um, speak. Um, so our, uh, the position we've had open, we've had advertised for three months now. <coughs> it's been empty for two months. Um, all of the case load, or all of the cases from that position had to be absorbed by the other attorneys in the office. Um, as attorneys, we have an ethical responsibility as part of our professional licensing to not carry a caseload that is more than we can competently handle. Um, the National District Attorneys Association has recommended caseloads for prosecutors. They hover between 35 cases to about 75, depending on the type of case. Obviously, a, you know, a drug case doesn't take as much time as, say, a sexual assault case. My attorneys, um, I have the lowest caseload in the office at right around 40. Um, one of my attorneys has over 200 cases assigned to him right now. Um, the rest of them are, are between about 100 and 160. So we have that open position. Um, and it is absolutely necessary that we fill that position because we cannot, we can't sustain the level of cases that we have now. And my biggest concern is that with that increased workload that I'm going to lose someone else because they're going to go to another county where they get paid more and won't have that caseload. And then we're going to be two down and it's just going to spiral. I know we had this issue um, the two years prior to me being sworn in. We had, I think, over a 300% turnover in the attorneys. Um, obviously, that doesn't benefit the, the victims here in Carroll County or the taxpayers. They should have confident attorneys prosecuting these cases. And so um, it has been a concern of mine to make sure that we're keeping pace with other counties and what we're paying and compensating the attorneys. Um, Madam Chair, I apologize, but I'm going to need to ask you to repeat how much you wanted to add to the salary line. It, I'm not adding anything to it. Okay. Um, it's, it's an increase in the salaries. I don't know. Do we have to approve that here, or can she, can she work with her? Yes. Um, why don't we move the 1700 that that's coming out of the, out of our clothing and the vehicle expense up into salaries? That gives you another $1,700, and you won't raise the budget line. And then she can still move money around in, in inside. I, I don't I don't want to take those away because she is. Well, well you have to. I mean, she, she can't get it as as well, the elected. Well, we can make that reimbursable a reimbursable expense. You said. Right, but but those lines are already there. Then I would like to use that money to increase those that the reimbursable. Okay, so line. you want to put it in there? I mean. Okay. So, but okay. Mm. I'm trying to clarify that now. Could you please answer the question? Thank you. Um, yeah, my understanding from Representative Buka was that the accountable plan does mean reimbursable, um, and that that is acceptable. We wouldn't have to change the salary line because I've had that position open, so it's we're going we're going to have that extra money in this year because that position has been open for two months, so that salary is not then being expended. 
Yes, Representative Cox. Thank you, Chair. Just a, a clarification because I'm getting uh, lost here. Um, the, the question of the increase in salary, is that specific to the uh, folks that are already working in the office, or is that a recommendation to increase the salary of the new position, hoping to fill it with a better salary? I'm lost where that's going. Okay. I, my, my recommendation is to increase by 2,000 all of the three positions, because you can't hire someone new more than you're paying someone who's already working. And retaining, it's as important to retain what we have as it is to bring someone new on board, because we, we're, we're going to lose the people that we're paying le much less than other counties around, or, or private practice, a new attorney coming in, uh, into private practice would start at probably 20% higher salary than what we're paying already. Okay, I mean, I'm not I'm aware of the process here very well. Uh, is that something that's at the salary chain? Obviously, in those three, is that something that's done by the commissioners or something by us? Well, that's what that's what I am asking. Do it, do we do it at this level or no? No, it's, it's so not it will be the, so the commissioners would have to be hearing our thinking. And right. Hearing the funding level is there, so that's be their recommendation. Is that, is that the correct assumption? Um. Look, the monies are in her salary, and right. as long as you approve that line, she can fund it any way she wants. Although she can't go over that 434, 950 for going into 2020. So, you know what I mean? Yes. But we're, uh, so I'm not asking to change any of the, the bottom line. Okay. Yes? Just, yeah, just, okay, if I can direct to the next rep. So, the base salary of the three people that are currently there is going to go up by X amount of dollars. But the commission is the one that has to prove that it's a salary change. Is that correct? Do they have a contract? Um, no, they don't have a contract. They and don't. and they're hired by the county attorney okay. with the approval of the commissioners. Okay. But really, she should operate her office okay. Thank the you. way she sees fit. Yep. As Thank long as she doesn't go over that fourth thing, Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Representative Crawford. So she really doesn't need our approval. So she no. doesn't need our approval. So we don't need we don't need to change a thing that's here that you can do what you need to do. Sheriff, did you have something? Yeah, just for clarification, the difference you will see possibly if those wages do increase is in 2020. Right. We'll have to include right. in that budget. Right, right. So we will have to look at it again in 2020, but given the way things are going. <laughs> yes? Um, if you increase the salaries, wouldn't there be increases to uh, other lines such as Social Security? Um, retirement, etc. Not this Mine. year, because that money is already in here for salaries, and it with the re all the related costs. They're not because there's been an empty position, and so the money has accumulated. But it is it is already in there. So we're essentially not changing anything right. on this bottom line. Right. So, so could we have. I don't think we have a motion. On this this line because Representative Buko isn't here. Did we have a motion on that? Sorry, no. I lost it. The uh, motion, the original motion, is to approve six four six two one two. Uh, motion by Havilani, seconded by Como for discussion. And from what I can understand, I don't think it's going to change today, Madam Chair. No, I don't. I'm just looking at something. Sorry, I'm just six four six two one two. So we need to make no changes in that. We have a motion. It has been seconded. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would um, make an amendment to reduce the line. Just a minute. Um, uh, the, I'm sorry, I can't locate the line right this minute. Um, where we added in 2,500 for uniforms um, because the rationale. Oh, may I speak to my motion? My amendment. My motion for an amendment. Yes. Thank you. Well, we have to have a second. Is there a second? Yes. For purposes of discussion. Can I speak to my motion? Thank you, Madam Chair. So the rationale for adding the $2,500 for uniforms was that the um, uh, staff in the county attorney's office were underpaid and we could not attract new candidates. And this was supposed to make the position more attractive to them. So since um, uh, it sounds like the discussion is going that there will be an increase 
um, it's not necessary to add the uniforms. Um, also, I feel very um, uncomfortable with adding, well, first off, I want to say that I really believe that when you have a problem on one level, you should solve it on that level whenever possible. And if our problem is in our salaries, we should solve it there. So if we are solving it there, we don't need to add the uniforms. And also, a uniform benefit may be very helpful to some employees and not at all helpful to other employees. And we did also in the committee discuss other options such as uh, tuition reimbursement. And again, that's the kind of thing that is helpful to some employees but not other employees. So therefore, that's why I would recommend adjusting by that $2,500. Else? I just have a clarification, Madam Chair. So you're saying that we can't give them a clothing allowance? You keep saying uniform, but it's really a clothing allowance, is it not? Is it something that you're, you're, you just I feel that they shouldn't have? Um, um, may I respond? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it was presented to us as a uniform allowance. And my feeling is that it's not necessary if we're going to solve the problem that we were having by increasing salaries. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, it seems to me highly unusual for a professional position to have a clothing allowance. So um, I will support the motion. Representative. Uh, when I was a detective in state police, we always had a clothing allowance of $500. <coughs> That could be used for uh, dry cleaning, buying a new shoe, whatever you wanted, because you weren't required to have to wear a professional appearance. And I would just like to just um, say I'm also on that committee. We discussed this at length, and one of the one of the issues um, is that our what we pay in our county attorney's office is significantly below what even people who who the prosecutors from our local police departments who are prosecuting misdemeanors are paying more than we are paying our county attorneys to be dealing with felonies and major crimes for the people in our community. And if we can't raise the salaries sufficient to be competitive, we try to come up with ways that we could supplement some of the costs that these young people have to try to get people to become prosecutors. They can make significantly more money working in legal off, private legal offices than they can make as prosecutors. And the victims in our in our county truly need good representation to, to fight for their rights. Yes, Representative Crawford. Thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, I'll also add, we give the sheriff um, an allowance for uniforms. That's for their profession. And you can, I, I, I don't know. My husband buys a suit, it's not cheap, and he wears a suit every day. And when he was on the state police, he had an allowance because he had to go out and buy suits. He had to wear a suit every day. So the sheriff wears uniforms. You could consider that a uniform, as um, Representative Tyser said. Um, I think it's an incentive. I don't think it's a bad thing. And I, I would vote to keep that in so that the attorneys can look presentable in court. <coughs> I could use a new suit when I go to Anton Conkers to uh, have a little Texas. use your $100. I was just, I was just saying that that's, that's our choice. I know, having come out of retirement to suddenly start going to Concord, I had gotten rid of all of my professional clothes. I suddenly had to, yeah. thank goodness, the hand me ups from my daughters. But, but we, all, we all face these things. But we're not talking about retired people who have made a choice. We're talking about professional well, all people. Of us all of us are retired. <laughs> but we are talking about professional people who are, who are representing our county and representing us. So. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can we call it another name? You know, somehow the money spent, but we just have a different title for it. Okay. Title uniform out the same. In the next year's budget. Yeah. I think. Madam Chair, thank you. Um, I did catch up and find that it is listed on uh, line 140.110.052 as staff clothing allowance. 
Yes. Just for clarification, Madam Chair, no, it's actually 051 and 052 that the Vice Chair is speaking of because she wanted to remove 2,500 not 2,000. Okay. She did. Thank you. So the motion on the floor is to remove. Yes. Thank the uh, Delegation Secretary for pointing that out. Oh. Thank you. We will publicly thank her. The motion on the floor is to remove. Numbers 411051 uh, and 4110052, $2,500 to delete it from the budget. And so if you vote yay, you're voting to delete it. If you vote nay, you're voting to maintain it. So let's call the vote. Madam Chair. Yes, one well, second. Just for the record, the new number would be six, 643712 Well, we're, we're yes. Just make a change in the number. Uh, just like extra yeah. sure. So the net effect, if I may, the net effect is basically wiping out the raise you just allowed them to have to make it equal. Is that the correct? Is that the yes. Um, no, 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 because yeah. if I could. Yes. Thank you. Um, we uh, have discussed that the three assistants will have a raise of two thousand dollars each. This line is twenty five hundred dollars total. Yes. Yeah. Right, so we would be <coughs> removing that benefit, which we yeah. put in as an incentive. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. So I think it will help to clarify and not confuse, but um, the clothing allowances are new items here. And so it's not taking away something that somebody already has. It's saying in, um, the committee had voted to add in money for clothing allowance and suggesting that since we, since the uh, county attorney intends to raise the salaries um, that by a greater amount actually, then that would not be necessary. Um, and I think the other, the other side is that we want to have sufficient incentive to be able to maintain our our staff of lawyers. Yes, would you? I just wanted to um, just one quick point. So the the job that I've had posted, I've actually had a salary range that is um, probably higher than what I would be able to to hire anyone at because I started with the low range. So my salary range on the the posting went up to sixty four thousand. Even if I raised it, it would only be sixty two thousand because it's sixty to 64 is what my range was for the last three months, and I don't have any applicants even at that. So even with the $2,000 range, would still put me in what I've advertised, if that makes any sense, and I still don't have any applicants. I've got one applicant right now for after three months. Would you advertise a clothing allowance? <laughs> <laughs> but you can offer it. It's something that right. certainly that I could offer. Okay. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Okay. We are voting on the amendment to re remove the 2500 from the budget. So if you vote yay, it's to remove it. Nay, is to maintain the allowance. Representative Tice Rest. Yay. Clerk will be voting no. Representative Butler. Yes. Representative Como. Nay. Representative Cordelli. No. Representative Crawford? No. Representative Knark? No. Representative McDonald? No. Representative Marsh? No. Representative Nelson? No. Representative Woodcock? No. Ran the chair? No. Ten to two. Motion fails. The motion fails. So that brings us back to the bottom line of the budget. Um, the original motion was to approve the county attorney's budget at 646-212. Motion to buy Avalani, seconded by Como. Is there any further discussion? Okay, would you call the vote? Representative Tice first. No. Rep Clerk will be voting yes. Representative Butler. Yes. Representative Como. Yes. Representative Cordelli. Yes. Representative Crawford. Yes. Representative... Yes. 
Representative McDonald? Yes. Representative Marsh? Yes. Representative Nelson? Yes. Representative Woodcock? Yes. And the chair? Yes. 11 to 1, motion passes. Thank you. Um, I wonder if we shouldn't move to the nursing home yes. just to make sure that we get this done in time. Madam Chair, uh, could we do an easy one before we get to? You want to do an easy one? Okay. Would be the victim's witness, and that would, I think that would conclude the county attorney's budget. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay. Two. A motion to. Motion, motion to. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, seventy-eight thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. second by Representative Marsh. Thank you. Okay. Is there any discussion? Representative Cordell. Thank you. Um, is there a new position in this uh, salary line? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Does the county attorney want to expand? county attorney, would you like to expand on that? Do you want me to explain the new position? Yes. Sure. That is to add a um, another victim services person to assist with subpoenas, um, notifying victims of court hearings, um, prepping witnesses for trial, um, sitting with witnesses during trial, um, and gathering restitution information. So it was added because our caseload has gone up by 144 percent was the last number and. That position has been there um, just as one person for all of that time. And right now, she's working significant overtime just trying to, just to get the bare minimum done. Um, yes, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can the county attorney just give me the, uh, an approximate number of how many cases that the individual actually has to do? Sure. Um, right now, last year in our office, we received over 300. Um, so at any given point, it depends on how long that case takes to get through the system. I believe I pulled the stats last night. I think we are, are looking at over 600 open cases in the office right now. Now that not all of those cases are hers, um, only the cases that involve a victim. So our traditional drug cases would not involve anything that she would have to do. So anything where there is a victim impacted by that, anybody that has lost money from a burglary, robbery, theft, anything like that, anything that involves an assault or behavior against a child, anything like that. Just to follow up, when you said a case against a child, do you mean child sex abuse? And how many cases are those? Just just round about, just to give the just to give the delegation. I think we hmm, just a second, and I will pull out my statistics on that. child sex abuse images, which sometimes has an identifiable victim. We Obviously, we have to run that through the system to see if there's an identifiable victim because there is a, a federal system that lets us know whether or not that person has been identified. So um, we are, I would say, in the range of 20 to 30 in a given year we're dealing with. Um, they have to go to the Child Advocacy Center to sit through those interviews with us. Um, we're doing that probably once, sometimes twice a week. Um, so there's a significant amount of work that goes into those kinds of cases. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Okay. And we'll, we'll call the vote. The um, motion on the floor is to accept the, the budget of $78,999 for the victim witness program. Representative Tyshaw. Yay. Yay or nay? Yay. Correctly yes. voting yes. Uh, Representative Butler. Aye. 
Representative Como. Aye. Representative Cordelli. Yes. Representative Crawford. Yes. Representative Knark. Yes. Representative McDonald. Yes. Representative Marsh. Yes. Representative Nelson. Yes. Representative Woodcock. Yes. And the chair. Yes. Unanimous.
That's right. And if you're okay with it, we'll move on to page four. Um, you'll see that uh, the subcommittee in their first meeting, our first meeting, uh, reduced the overtime by $500, reduced the general operating supplies um, from 90 to 87. And this morning, in uniform expense, um, we moved that line down to 6,400, um, so that uh, uh, the total has uh, changed to 1667054. Plus um, 097, we added new equipment. Ah, thank you. Yes, that was 10, um, when the multi two uh, subcommittee met, there were uh, items in the capital. Uh, line that it was recommended that we uh, move them into operations and so in the new equipment line there is uh, $10,503 and that amount comes from um, dietary, heated cart, um, a smart therm induction charger of 5157 and that is the uh, item that apparently heats the plate the heaters that the plates go on that keep the uh, entree plates warm. Uh, utility card at $15.97 and a heated pizza display case at $1,200. Um, we talked about the pizza display case and decided to keep it because um, it is likely to bring in more income and pay for itself uh, within we uh, thought possibly as uh, quickly as the first year. So that total is 10503 So the total for that, that line item is now 10000 For that line item, 197 is $10,503. Madam Chair? Yes. Pizza. What is a pizza display case? A heated heat heat pizza. Heat That's what a heated pizza is. Is it like a popcorn dispenser looking for it? Yeah. Are, are you not a pizza eater? <laughs> it's gluten free, I'll eat it. <laughs> um, it is a uh, big box that is heated um, and has uh, uh, several different trays um, so that you can do not only pizza, but you could do um, uh, some sandwiches and hamburgers and that kind of thing that you want to keep warm that are an easy. Uh, walk into the space, pull it out, and uh, go with it. Okay, thank you. Are there any other? Uh, not on that page. The bottom line was 1667054. Okay. On page 5. Um, this is nursing and this is uh, uh, you know, the core of uh, the budget um, and the salary lines uh, you will see have increased and they've increased because of the changes that we have agreed to in terms of starting salaries. Um, I understand that, uh, this morning that uh, in part because of our ability uh, to increase salaries, we have added new staff recently. Um, you will see that the agency line, um, uh, although in 2018 unaudited on 023, um, we spent $438,000. Um, the 2019 budget line is $150,000. We reviewed that again today and uh, with discussions uh, with administration um, because of the ability to hire more staff, um, uh, it is felt that uh, that agency line uh, will be something that we can meet. Um, the only other change on this page uh, is in supplies. Um, we felt that could be reduced and we reduced it to 300000 instead of three fifteen, And so the total for that page is $6,129,000. 605. On page six, please. Um, physicians in nursing. 
new positions in nursing? Right. Uh, what's the question? Uh, what are the new positions in nursing? Madam Chair, if I might. Sure. Um, they're not really new positions. What we're doing is creating four floating LNA positions. <coughs> Knowing that we have a vacancy rate of, of between four and six percent, rather than calling somebody in when we know when we when we know on a, at a given shift we have 30 people and we're going to have one maybe two out on a given shift, we're going to create full-time positions, floating positions within the existing budget structure. The the net effect should be to save overtime, to save agency, um, and save, especially at the LNA level, save incentive fees. So it's restructuring. They are new positions, but it's not new additional dollars to pay for them. Any further? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. On page six, uh, environmental services. Uh, the only change we made uh, in our first meeting was on propane, and uh, we can ask. Uh, I know we've had discussions about propane, uh, and unfortunately, that line has increased significantly. The bottom line is one four one two seven nine one. On page seven, physicians, pharmacies, and physical therapy. There have been no changes made by the subcommittee. Okay. Um, okay. Go ahead. Okay. Environmental services. Um, salary line. Is there a new salary position? Environmental services. No. I didn't recall one, and. Uh, no. The director says no. But follow up. Yes. Um, there's a uh, 19, well, the unaudited 2018 was 590, but we've got a $50,000 <laughs> increase in that salary line. In 2018, I had uh, positions that were unfilled. Um, you can see on page 7 the totals there with no change. On page 8, recreational therapy. Um, we just reduced the postage line. In social services, we reduce the postage line as well. And I'm happy to answer or find somebody who can. <laughs> Any other questions on this? Question? The question the line. That did not change the bottom line. It's still 15225990. 15225990 is the changed uh, yeah. amount. That's the correct uh, total. Thank you. Yes, we can. We've got Thank you, Sharon. Mr. Butler, is the representative of the board. Is it uh, any potential for the new HR position in the nursing facility to be the HR position? Um, I don't believe so. What we talked about, and I'm sorry, I'm not sure. <coughs> Thank you. Um, what we talked about was the fact that we have uh, a large staff uh, uh, at the nursing home. Um, there's currently only one HR person um, who is juggling all the pieces and not doing that as successfully as she might. Um, and there was a good argument made um, that a second position is needed. Um, and that would be specifically for the nursing home. Whether or not there is a way to expand that overall was not something we talked about and you know I suppose the commissioners and the administrator could talk about that. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Chairman. Uh, just informational um, until a couple of years ago when the HR director and generalist left, we had two positions for human resources for the county, an HR director and a generalist. They were two people. 
for the county. Both both organizations. Yes. Nursing home the entire home. county. Yes. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Are there any further questions regarding the nursing home? Yes. I could get um, the bottom line number again because the subcommittee on page two shows fifteen two thirty one. Is that the number we're dealing with? No. Um, the revised number after this morning's meeting is one five two two five nine nine zero. Thank you. Yes. Clarification. Um, is the controller and county administrator made the, the adjustments to the lines from this morning, so we have the same bottom line number, mm -hmm. and the corresponding lines will be changed accordingly. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Are there any further questions? We will call the roll. Representative Tyshurst? Yes. Clerk will be voting yes. Representative Popper? Yes. Representative Como? Aye. Representative Cordelli? No. Representative Crawford? Yes. Representative Knark? Yes. Representative McDonald? Yes. Representative Marsh? Yes. Representative Nelson? Yes. Representative Woodcock? Yes. And the chair? Yes. Who is going to be needing to leave? Let's, uh, let's do the revenue. Yes. Oh, the revenues. Oh, I'm sorry. You wouldn't have us. Oh, I'm sorry also, Madam uh, Chair. Um, the yes. annex has an expenditure uh, amount as well. Shall we do that first? Mm -hmm. Sure. What page is that in? What page? Um, it is not in this uh, package at all, um, and I don't know that we have anything other than the page I have in front of me, but it's only four lines, so I will four. try to be... 14? It is? 14. 14. Good. In the old packet. Thank you. And um, there are changes to uh, what, what, uh, what are the actual dollar amounts that you have on that representative, or what, what date? This is from February 8. Okay. So, so this is 33.5. It was 33.5 is the total. Great. <coughs> um, so on line 029, contracted fees and services. Excuse me, we have a question. Could we get the line and then I'm um, first and a second? Thank yes. you. We have um, a motion. And the line is? The line is 100.9500.029. No, no. Well, that's just for the one. Okay, so that is right. Thirty-eight two is the total amount. Thirty-eight thousand two hundred dollars is the total for the annex expenditure. Yes, that's different. Is there a second to that motion? Yeah, it is different than what we have. I'm hoping he's going to, he's going to clarify that. Do we have a second so that we can discuss it? Okay. It's probably mostly the propane line. Um, the 029 contracted fees and services uh, is 2800 um, and that is for sprinkler, uh, uh, fire extinguishers, pest control, um, those kinds of things. In electric, it's thirteen thousand. Uh, in propane, it's seventeen four. And the maintenance and repair is five thousand for a total of thirty-eight two. Thank you. That answers that question. Are there any? Is there any further discussion on those numbers? Is there any number on the roll? Sure. As the Administrator and controller change the line? Yes, to, to, to the 3824. 3824. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's supposed to be 3824. 3824. Thank you. Representative Tysarst? Yes. Uh, Chair, we voted. Sorry. Turk, we voted yes. Representative Butler? Yes. Representative Como? Yes. Representative Cordelli? Yes. Representative Crawford? Yes. Representative Knark? Yes. Representative McDonald? Yes. Representative Marsh? Yes. Representative Nelson? Yes. Representative Woodcock? Yes. And the chair? Yes. Is there another 
another department that needs to be moved. So we'll do the revenues first. <laughs> revenues, yes. I don't want to get that money. <laughs> I would move uh, eleven million four five zero two nine five. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. In this morning's review, um, and uh, you know, this is an interesting page. It is uh, complicated um, uh, in terms of room and board uh, revenues. Um, it is more difficult because we're having uh, shorter lengths of stay. Um, excuse me, who seconded that? I Representative Marsh. Yeah, Representative Marsh. Sorry. Okay. I'm trying to find the papers. Um, so, whereas we have been able to do 98 or even 99% uh, occupancy in years past, our uh, occupancy for the past year has been around 97%, um, and there have been fewer Medicaid days. So those are the changes you see in those income lines. In the private room and board 012, we felt that it wasn't uh, reasonable to uh, project uh, 3.5 when we only did 3.4 in the unaudited end of year. So we kept that 3.410429. Same thing is true for personal resources. Um, the budget in 2019 was uh, 898, but we did 903.226, so we uh, kept the 903.226. Um, as the as the correct line um, in 023, um, we reduced the 18250 to the 2018 actual 167943. In ProShare, you will recall we've had many discussions about this uh, as we've been dealing with the I, uh, IDM issue as well. Um, and we got 1.5 in this past year. We heard from the commissioner that it is uh, likely or highly possible that we will get something similar in the coming year. But uh, the administrator was conservative with the 1 million uh, amount. And uh, as a compromise, um, we uh, moved 1.25 um, as the line in uh, 044. Uh, in 046, uh, skilled pharmacy, we reduced it to the actual. In 048, um, we reduced it to the actual. And in cafe meals, um, we uh, increased that to $77,000 since the uh, end of year was uh, positive. Um, and in... Uh, telephone and cable income, uh, we, uh, that was higher at the end of the year, so we made that at a, a even 15000 So the total for that is, as I said, eleven million four fifty two ninety five. Any questions? Seeing none, call the roll on four million four hundred and fifty thousand two hundred and ninety-five dollars for revenue. Eleven million. Eleven million. Four fifty-two ninety-five. Took me a minute to catch up to you, so I'm on two pages. Welcome to the meeting. The motion is. $11,450,295, motioned by Representative Butler, seconded by Representative Marsh. Representative Tyson? Yes. Clerk will be voting yes. Representative Butler? Yes. Representative Como? Yes. Representative Quadelli? Yes. Representative Crawford? Yes. Representative Knark? Yes. Representative McDonald? Yes. Representative Marsh? Yes. Representative Nelson? Yes. Representative Woodcock? Yes. And the chair? Yes. Passed. Is there 
someone else who needs to move forward and for the timing? Uh, we can finish the multi juice. Mm -hmm. okay. We'll do that and then maybe we'll take a five minute break. And if anyone wants to get a drink of water or Jerry, whatever, then we'll go on because people are waiting. Well, actually, so she has to go, so maybe we should go to jail. Sheriff. Well, we have, if you want to finish multi-two, then we'll go right to jail. Is that okay with your time? Sure. Um, we still have one more to do in a, a multi-one. It's the BAS line. Right, so we'll go back to the multi first and finish that up. What page? What page are we on? Uh, that is on 14, I believe. Oh, okay. What is it? Eight. Oh, yeah,
The number that I have is 1,800, I'm sorry, 187595, not 202695. Mm. Same here. Um, that, uh, I think that you are correct. I uh, did this addition on a day that I was not in the best of health, and I clearly came up to the wrong number. Um, so the, the correct number should be 187595, and if the chair will allow me to, I'll amend my motion to that number. Oh, yeah, so I six nine. Six nine plus. Five nine five. Five nine five. Five nine five. Yeah, fifteen thousand dollars to yeah. the. Oh, one Thank you, Madam Chair. Could we just have a quick update about this uh, situation with the generator? Uh, they had to rent the generator uh, to uh, maintain operations because of the generator having been gotten into by vermin uh, and shorting out the generator and causing a fire, uh, and that has to be paid for. And so this amount is actually going to expenses that we had last year? Uh, since January 1st. Since January 1st. Yes. And I'm embarrassed to admit that I can't remember if I saw the generator out there when we came in today. Okay. Okay. Right by the boiler room. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Representative Avalon. I'd like to thank the delegation secretary for catching the, uh, the math on the last motion. You're welcome. Thank you. 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 Thank you very much. The motion is on the floor. It has been seconded. Is there any further questions? Okay, we'll call the roll call. Representative Ticehurst? Yes. Chair, we vote, and uh, clerk will be voting yes. <laughs> Representative Butler? Yes. Representative Como? Yes. Representative Cordelli? No. Representative Crawford? Yes. Representative Knurk? Yes. Representative McDonald? Yes. Representative Marsh? Yes. Representative Nelson? Yes. Representative Woodcock? Yes. And the chair? Yes. Uh, next one is our information technology line, information technology section, which is the uh, 8,000. Uh, uh, page 11. Thank you. Uh, we made the following changes. Uh, we reduced uh, training counting wide from $10,000 to $3,000, and uh, we uh, updated the computer expense contract line to uh, 119245 Excuse me one moment, can we just have a motion first? Yes, I'm moving a total, the, the, finishing it, I was going to say, therefore the motion is for $334,760 for this section. 334760? Yes. Thank you. First, then we have... Okay, do we have a second to that motion? Second. Thank you. Okay, please continue. I said everything I had to say. Thank you. Um, uh, we had discussion at the last meeting about uh, ACS system. Um, and uh, I, I don't think that anyone knows. Um, what is, is going on. We've had uh, uh, the comment that they don't know if they're going to stay with the system. Um, that was also repeated during the budget discussions with the commissioners um, back in November. They didn't know if they were going to stay with the system. Um, but um, uh, there is an unknown amount being added to this uh, budget for upgrades to the ACS system. Uh, I, for one, I'd like to see the quotations that they have for that, and I think that um, uh, decisions should be made by the commissioners um, and others as to whether they are going to stay with this system before um, we proceed forward. Um, I think it, I've been advocating for four or five years that um, uh, we uh, get the purchasing system. Credit cards are causing a large problem and a reason for the uh, problems in the business office um, in terms of accounting. Um, 
but uh, until we decide um, whether we're going to stay with the ACS system, and I think that there should be a committee set up to explore that, um, that uh, I would be more comfortable, and I'll make a motion um, to remove $25,000 from the IT total and place that in um, a delegation contingency fund while we explore whether um, the county is going to stay with the ACS system. If the decision is made to stay with the ACS system, um, then based on the uh, uh, discussions and the uh, quotations uh, from uh, the vendor, um, we can uh, release those, the executive committee of the delegation can release those contingency funds um, uh, based on a plan that is developed for upgrading the system. Okay, thank you. Can I ask the commission? Yes? Can I? Uh, Do we have a first group or a second? Oh, I'm sorry. Second for discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Uh, can we identify the line where that's going to come out of? Um, Sorry. Sure. Um, I would take um, uh, $5,000, excuse me, $25,000 from the cohesion contracts. That's 066. 066? Right. Could I ask the administrator or the commissioners? Well, why don't we this? Yeah, why don't we ask the finance director? She's the one who oh, works with it. Well, let's ask her. Sure. Kath, well, what's going on? <laughs> there's, a, there's actually a lot of stuff going on. Um, our server can't accommodate us going to the next, the newest current version of our software for financials. So until we can get into the cloud, I think the system is good. But there's a lot of expenses involved with that, and also for for um, adding people for for read-only access, there's an expense involved with that. So we have to have a determination of how many people we have. What we have budgeted for is to go into the cloud and include um, getting yeah 11, 11 seats to to access the system. Mm -hmm. And also, that includes we're planning on doing a purchasing system and payables because purchasing and payables actually go together. Currently, we just use an expenditures and the disbursements is the only thing we're doing. It's not a pay true payable system. So what you're saying, the capacity of the program is adequate, but we can't access it because of our server? Yes. Right. Is yes, it, we can't, we're we're maxed out. I can't get to the newest, the, the last two or three um, versions of the software updates because our server is no longer being supported by IBM. So we need to get into the cloud. So the lack of an adequate server is our issue. Well, I think the the, the server itself is very expensive to replace. So I think the best way is to go to the cloud. Which is reflected. Right. Right. That's what we're. So it is reflected in these contracts. Yes. Is yes. our capacity to get to the internet. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chairman. If you take the twenty-five thousand out of either <coughs> 066 or 098, whichever one it comes out of, it's going to be less than the same the contract or not. So you have to split it up. But if we if we do take it out, then it doesn't allow us to access. I mean, this is something we need. Right. Okay. Is there um, Thank you. Um, the numbers don't exactly match up with the numbers on the quotations that the county received um, back in uh, 2015, I believe. Um, that I was given a copy of um, when I was allowed to uh, talk to the vendor. Um, I have never been allowed to talk to the vendor since then. Um, um, I would be interested in seeing the uh, quotation for doing this. 
Um, and I'm hearing a different story today than was discussed with the commissioners in November and at our last meeting when we didn't know if we were going to stay with the bank. Uh, is, are the commissioners... I'm sorry. Yep. Um, would it be permissible? Permission. <laughs> would it be okay uh, to ask the commissioners um, if it is their intention or if they have analyzed um, the decision to stay with this vendor? Because we heard that there was uh, the, the company had been sold twice and there were concerns about uh, the stability of the company. Can someone answer that question so that we know yeah, where we so. are with the issues? Okay. You feel comfortable answering? Let me uh, well, what I was going to say, Madam Chairman, mm -hmm. was that for several years, um, Representative Cordelli has been saying that we need to get to the cloud. And uh, so with that under advisement last year, that was one of the things we looked at. And we found out that it's now going to be financially feasible to go to the cloud and not up, keep updating the uh, service. So that's the process that we're following now. As far as ACS goes, as myself personally, until we can get on the cloud and see what is then available um, and what they can provide for us, I can't really make an intelligent decision whether to change from ACS or not. It's my understanding that once we get through the process of getting to the cloud, it's going to open up some new parts of ACS that are going to meet the needs that we have. But we won't know until we get there. Thank you. Yes. And, and, and you know, it, it's not as simple as, you know, flicking a switch and, and, and you're on a whole new system. It's a lot of work to go to a new system. Uh, because we have such a large system and, um, you know, so I, yeah, I said, you know, we, we weren't sure if we're going to stay with them, but, I mean, that doesn't mean we're going to do it next week. Um, you know, Kathy and I have talked about it and we'll continue to talk about it. And, you know, we'll continue to, to look at options that, you know, best fit our county. But right now, we're with ACS and we're going to be going to the cloud. So we need this 25000 in order to do it. So if you cut it out. Yes, sir. yes, I'll be voting against this motion because we need the $25,000 in there in order to continue to operate while whatever transitions may need to be made are going forward. So, uh, plus we'll be compromising our security if we can't put the updates on the system. So, uh, I think it would be foolish to cut $25,000 out of the IT budget. Uh, if someone has... Um, different lines that they would like to take the $25,000 from, um, that, that's fine with me, but um, uh, again, based on just what I heard um, uh, from the commissioner and the administrator, um, the uncertainty, um, I would like to see it placed in a contingency fund, and I think that it would be wise on the part of the commissioners um, uh, to form a committee um, maybe with some people who have some IT experience, including the IT consultant um, for the county, uh, to look into um, this uh, because it, uh, just moving to the cloud um, for the ACS system and is a, a process, as is implementing the purchasing system, um, is going to be a large a change to every department from the way they operate now, and something that should have been done uh, years ago, moving to a purchasing system with purchase requisitions and so forth, rather than use of credit cards, which uh, creates problems all the way around, and uh, has been pointed out as a um, security issue. Are there any other questions? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm a little bit uncomfortable with the idea of using contingency funds for purposes such as this because it seems to be right on a wavy or cloudy line uh, between the different authorities of the convention and the commissioners. Are there any other comments? 
then the motion at this point is to remove the $25,000 um, from the IT line. So call the roll. Uh, and you are voting to re if you vote to re um, I, you are voting to remove it. Nay. To, to a contingency fund. To a contingency fund. Yes. If you vote nay, then you are leaving it there and to move forward with the process in the administration. Representative Tyson? No. Clerk will be voting yes. Representative Butler? Fine. Representative Comox? Yes. Representative Cordali? Yes. Representative Crawford? No. Representative Canark? No. Representative McDonald? No. Representative Marsh? No. Representative Nelson? Yes. Representative Woodcock? No. And the chair? No. Seven to four, the motion failed. The amendment fails. Okay, so we are back on the original um, motion. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to ask either someone on the committee or the administrator or the controller if um, the amount of money that we have budgeted now will allow us to purchase the module required to uh, generate Excel the budget in Excel spreadsheet without a lot of labor put into it. That I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm guessing probably. Yeah, there's 26 more spreadsheets available to download when we get to the current level of the software, but I haven't been able to determine your exact question. Thank you. I would assume so, though, honestly. But well, we can get an answer. Okay, thank you. Yes. Are there other questions? Yes, Representative Just a clarification. The number on the IT budget is 334760. That is correct. That been, it was reduced by a dollar amount from the original posting on 28. Uh, one line was increased and one line was decreased. Okay, thank you. We have those increases and decreases again. Uh, yes, uh, uh, line 17, uh, training county wide was reduced from 10,000 to 3,000. And uh, computer expense contracts was increased uh, from uh, uh, 115,795 to 119,245 to reflect actuals. Any other questions? Call the roll.
Hearing none, we'll call the vote. Representative Ticehurst. Yes. Chair Parker, we voting yes. Representative Como. Yes. Representative Bordelli. Yes. Representative Crawford. Yes. Representative Kirk. Yes. Representative McDonald. Yes. Representative Marsh. Yes. Representative Nelson. Yes. Representative Woodcock. Yes. And the chair. Yes. The next motion is to adopt the uh, commissioner's recommendation of uh, uh, fifty thousand dollars for capital reserves. So is there a second? Speaking to the motion, the water tower which we maintain for the town of Wasabi uh, here is uh, uh, showing its age and uh, rather than going to the bond market, uh, particularly in an era of rising interest rates, we thought that if we started to build up some capital reserves to pay for this outright when the time comes, it would be prudent. That's the way my town likes to do things. I don't know how other towns do things, but town of Brookfield likes doing things that way. Thank you. Yes. Would this be a revolving account? not revolving, we would have to encumber it. So we will look into that. The way it was reported to the committee is that they would be accumulating money for a number of years before making any expenditures. Right. Yes. This is the first one we've done, so. So some towns prefer not to do capital reserve funds, but instead have a capital um, improvement plan and I understand that we do have a capital improvement plan. And do we know off the top of our heads where the water tower fits in that plan? It's, it, it's not in the capital plan. It's not. Nope. Can you explain to me why not to help me understand better? Uh, I can't. Okay. Um, we just thought that because of the cost, you know, it's $150,000. Uh, uh, or more. Uh, we thought we'd start at least fifty thousand a year instead of paying it all at once. I'm not sure if it's one hundred fifty or three hundred. I think it's more like three hundred actually. Do you remember that? That's my recollection. Two hundred fifty. Yeah. So, um, you know, as opposed to coming up with the three hundred thousand dollars in that one year, um, we thought that this would be a, a better way of doing it. We've never done a capital uh, reserve before, at least not since I've been here. Um, and because it was such a high cost, we just didn't. Is there any, are there any further questions? Yes. Just a question on uh, process, if I may, for the administrator. Um, so I'm not questioning the money, Mr. Um, Minister, it's just a question. So that money is not going to be lost in the annual excess? The general fund? No. Is there some technique to yes. all your accounting terms of Yes. You know, lose that? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. The problem I see with encumbering that every year is that we don't have a bill for it yet. So I'm going to suggest that you look into right your account. Or as soon as we end here today, I, I will contact our auditors. I, huh? Oh. Can I skip yeah. So I, I'll contact our auditors. Uh, Commissioner Babson. Thank you, Madam Chair. As much as you'd like to pawn it off on the town of Ossipi, uh, Representative Mark, <laughs> we're glad you have it here. And I, it's a service we've been providing. I, <laughs> and we don't, the, the water goes downhill. Representative <laughs> 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 Okay. Here's just a question on how capital reserve um, non-lapsing loans work. 
It would be like it would be an interest PSA interest bearing account, account and we would be adding to that. But I'm I think the question on the I have on the logistics of placing this into a capital reserve without that account set up would be premature. It's totally done before. We in the years past we actually have we have an actual capital reserve fund. So we I could just bring that back to life. So that's a separate account for it. Okay. Okay. It's it's, thank you, Madam Chair, but it's a specific account just for, so it's a designated Right, account. it's just yep. for the water tower. Right. can't do anything else. Yep. Right. Any, if I may? Yes. In the past, it looks like UNH has had one, the farm vehicle, sheriff's had one, mm -hmm. NBNH. So, I mean, we've done before. I don't know when. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I, I understand that we've done it before. I just want to speak on behalf of some taxpayers who don't want to pay now for something that isn't needed now, particularly since taxpayers come and go, and they may be paying for something that they won't benefit from in the future. And also since um, with a cap good capital improvement plan, your expenditures are, your capital expenses are evened out over time mm -hmm. because um, they're uh, purchased in sequence, I should say, would say. Representative Adelman. Would this money be returned to the county by surcharge on the users of the water? Um. The debt and the interest has not, so probably not. I mean, there aren't enough users to even, you know. If I may, hmm? yes. No, most of the use, I think, was it was misdirected is here on the county, the nursing yeah. home and the facilities here. I believe there's 120 customers. No. no. Is that 56? No. 40 no, something. There's just around 40. So there's only 40 houses in the village of Osby Corner that get water from us. The majority of them stays here on the complex. So this, this water tower is serving the whole complex, so essentially it's for our use. Right. They're just a I mean, we get an water. extra $27,000 a year or $25,000 a year from them to hop off set. Okay. Are there any further questions? So the motion is to uh, place $50,000 50, into a designated fund for the water tower. Would so, you like to call the roll? Sure. Representative Tice first. No. Chair, we're voting no. I'm sorry, the clerk will be voting no. Whoa, I apologize. Aspirations? What I had in mind. Representative Como? Nay. Representative Cordelli? No. Representative Crawford? Yes. Representative Kennard? Yes. Representative McDonald? Yes. Representative Marsh? Yes. Representative Nelson? Yes. Representative Woodcock? Yes. And the chair? Yes. Seven to four motion passes. Representative Marsh. Yes, the next motion is for the county convention. That's uh, item, item uh, section 9370. I move $9,226. Do we have a second to that motion? Okay, just second. Okay, Representative Kerner. It's a second, it's on page 13. <coughs> Has it been seconded, Madam Chair? Yes. 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 Representative Pinard, seconded. I'd like to speak to that. Yes. So, initially, uh, we had put in uh, 2850 for the delegation coordinator, like like um, like last year. Uh, but she's doing a lot more work. Um, we are you're already burned halfway through it, maybe a little bit more. Um, I would make a rec I would suggest that. 
we look at, or you look at, raising it maybe a little bit more. Any further comments on that? Um, I think it's looking at, I'm seeing kind of the same thing. Um, I think it's, it's only expended as charged, and it's and the time outside of the obligation to be here for these meetings, the time is um, really under the control of the chair to monitor how it is used. Uh, so if it's not used last year, I don't think we used it, and all of it. Um, so it is. And I think I like the idea of raising it a little bit also because there's some of us, for instance, I as a chair, I like to do a lot of my own stuff. I'm very capable on the computer and I can do a lot of my own work on it, but different people in this position might have more extensive needs. So I might recommend we might look at $3,200. So I guess I'm making a motion to increase it to $3,200. And again, if, if we don't need it, if we don't have a lot of meetings, um, then we get our work done very efficiently. We can save some of that. Is there a second to the motion? Second for discussion, Madam Chair. Thank you. Are there any questions? I think we sent out a copy of the, the contract so that you can see what the charges are and how that is charged. Yes. I don't think four hundred dollars is enough. Three fifty. That's that's essentially another meeting. So. I mean, what we're would you going through the whole year here? So September, October, November, until next December. Okay. What would you What would you suggest? I can withdraw stop, my stop motion. motion I can withdraw my motion. <laughs> I'm withdrawing your motion. I'm withdrawing my motion. I will withdraw my second. So, what? Yes. Is um, Fog on the Rutland and Marsh and committee, is that correct? Uh, it is our subcommittee, yes, and uh, the deadline was approved by a 4 nothing vote by the subcommittee. So, uh, I. Uh, in the absence of any further information, uh, nobody's given me any information to change the line, so I have no reason to change it over what my committee recommended. Yes. Do you have any opinion on increasing the line? Or <coughs> the uh, I think, based on what I've heard today, that's not an unreasonable thing to do. However, I'll point out to the convention that once we get the budget done, there's a lot less work for us to do here. So the the it, you can't extrapolate in a linear fashion. I, I think that the chairman's original uh, motion to add uh, was, was a reasonable motion. I would have voted in favor of that had that not been dropped. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Yes, Representative Dyson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I need to preface my comments by saying I have full appreciation for the person who currently holds the position, and my comments are not in any way a reflection of what I think about her or her performance. However, when I look just at what the position is, um, two things. One is that I think um, the coordinator uh, does a very important, very useful job, and it's a good investment of our uh, funds. <coughs> However, um, I don't see, I see that the position could expand exponentially because there's so many things we could use help with. But I don't see that as an essential thing to do. And I'm aware that we're really cutting it tight on some things that are essential functions. And I'm keeping in mind that we are going to get to the end of this budget process. It looks to me like we are going to be asking for additional funds from the taxpayers. Could be wrong on that, but <coughs> looking that way to me. And so I would have a difficult time in increasing this line essentially for our own convenience, um, given those factors. Thank you, Madam Chair. Are there any other comments? So, we 
maybe I will. Re yes. Did you want to restate a new amendment? I will re. Yes, I will restate a new amendment. I move that we increase the amount of funds for this position to <coughs> through by to three three thousand five hundred dollars, which would give us an additional meeting. And again, it will not be used unless it is <coughs> unless it is necessary. Two three to increase it to three thousand five hundred dollars. Thank you. <laughs> is there a second? No second for discussion, Madam Chair. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Okay. We'll call the roll. Okay. Representative Tyshurst. No. Kirk will be voting yes. Representative Como. Aye. Representative Cordelli. Yes. Representative Crawford. Yes. Representative Kirk. Yes. Representative McDonald. Yes. Representative Marsh. Yes. Representative Nelson. Yes. Representative Woodcock. Yes. And the chair. Yes. Ten to one. Representative Como? Yes. Representative Cordelli? Yes. Representative Crawford? Yes. Representative Knark? Yes. Representative McDonald? Yes. Representative Marsh? Yes. Representative Nelson? Yes. Representative Woodcock? Yes. And the chair? Yes. Motion passed. Ten. Yes, last motion is uh, for capital expenditures. That's the section 9400. Uh, I move uh, $409,564 at the totals are accurately reflected in what was distributed. One more time. Uh, 409564 Thank you. 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 Thank Did you have, excuse me, was there a different sheet that went out? Because this is not what I had on the What do you have on yours? Well, we, ours is a 385-564 from February 8th. Yes. Okay, well, let me start at the top and, and read it down. Um, excuse me, we need a second. Second. Starting, starting from the top and reading down, energy savings we left unchanged. Administrative building uh, was uh, increased to 18501 because the propane uh, vaporizer needed to be replaced before we had a bomb beside the building. Uh, the registry of deeds uh, we reduced to zero, I believe. Uh, yep, my notes are getting hard to read here. Uh, doctor's writing is like that. MVC dietary, uh, we had 5500 uh, DPW, we have 44,863. Sheriff Dispatch, we left unchanged at 80,000. Information Technology, uh, was nothing was requested. Uh, jail, uh, 90,000. Uh, Annex, nothing was requested. And MVC, I have 35,700. That was change was due to correcting that. One increase of fifty. I'm sorry, Madam. It's okay. One increase of fifty-five hundred. Uh, 
Yes. Well, what, that line was requested 9350, and we reduced it to 5500. <coughs> so that's not an increase. That's a decrease. Mm -hmm. Increase the tax. Straight billing up eighty five. Okay. Yes. The number you gave, Representative Bosch, was four zero nine. Five six four. Uh, yes, and that is what's reflected in the spreadsheet, which you distributed all the time. The number. Follow up, Madam Chair. Yes. Just, just so I'm clear, it's two eight. Mentions the um, total at three eight five five six four, and if we reduced it by forty eight fifty, no. it would be less than three eighty five. So it'd be. No, it's it's 509564. Just like Representative Marcus without the increase. Right. We increased a few things. And one is the uh, the is the two evaporators out back. Uh, that was eighteen thousand five hundred and one. Uh, we reduced uh, the MBC dietary, we took out ninety three fifty, but then we put in fifty five hundred for an ice maker. Um, so that was reduced about, you know. $3,800. Uh, the DPW, uh, we came in at $44,863 for a new plow truck. Uh, the 80000 is for the... New plow truck. Yep. It is for the new sheriff's vehicle. Uh, the 90000 is for the jail for a new fire system and... Uh, camera system. Camera board. system. And the 357 is for NBC uh, nursing lifts and everything else. I checked the mail. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the further question, yes, Representative Cordelli. Thank you. Um, the uh, fire camera systems for the jail, uh, you'd be going out to bid for that, so it could be less than $90,000? <coughs> you know, that's a super uh, I have roughly what the, uh, the fire panel is. That's rough estimates, around 30000 And as for the other part of it, yeah, both will go out to bid, so it could be less, yes. <coughs> yes, Representative Tyson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I apologize. I didn't hear the question. Um, we, we had asked for a skid steer and um, a uh, um, snow, 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 snow thing. But that, that's a skid steer. Um, I thought it was a snow attachment. No, it was the whole thing for 56000 um, Okay. And, uh, uh, and so we ended up, uh, and I think uh, some hay wagons or something, and we took everything out except for the plow truck. Because the plot truck has been costing us uh, a little over 10000 a year just to maintain. Yes, Representative. The, do we have a maintenance plan in place for our vehicles? Maintenance plan? Oil changes? Yeah, they do them down there. Down. They're down in the, in, in the garage. Do we, all up, yes. do we have a maintenance plan for our plow vehicles? I'm not sure. I'm sure we do. You, you mean as far as greasing and, and general maintenance? Chains. Yes. So every it's found at the end of the year. Yep. That kind of stuff. They take the chain out of the out of the sander, uh, re re grease all the gears, clean the chain, put the chain back in, all weeded up. Uh, um, the actual vehicles themselves, not the equipment. Um, Schedule the oil changes, upgrades. As far as I know, they, they do all the work down there on all the vehicles themselves. That, that, that like they can do. Um, some of the work, unfortunately, has been we've had to take it up because of computer um, issues with, with the computer. But all the small stuff, all the breaks, we do everything ourselves here. Again, yeah, just following up on the piece of comments, the uh, vehicle expenses and equipment repairs in DPW last year were a total of ten thousand five hundred. Mm -hmm. For all vehicles and equipment, not just the one plow truck that uh, we'd like to replace. Well, are you looking at any transfers too on top of that? 
I'm not. Oh. Um, I'm sorry. He, uh, I'm you. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Um, the transfer information we got uh, does not show from and to accounts um, as it has in the past years. Mm. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Chair. Um, for the committee, I'm just wondering if when the DPW request was discussed, um, if it came up that the, uh, in the jail we now have more programming for people there, and so we have fewer people out available for working. Um, sometimes I understand maybe down to just one person, mm -hmm. and the lack of labor needs to be made up somehow, and that was the reason for uh, the request for a skid steer. Uh, yes, that was okay. Is there any further discussion? We'll call the roll. Oh, wait, excuse me. Oh, um, yes. I'm just really uncomfortable with. Um, expecting the Department of Public Works to do more maintenance with less manpower and no equipment to make up for that lag. So, <laughs> I would make an amendment to um, if I, if I returned, I have I can't do the math quickly in my head. If I return that line item to what the commissioners recommended at one thousand and five nine hundred five thousand nine hundred and fifteen, that would be my amendment unless someone tells me I really need to correct my figures. I didn't hear everything that you said, but what happened at the subcommittee is Representative Butler made the motion to reduce that line item to that amount, uh, seconded by Representative Cordelli. We did discuss the uh, uh, labor from the jail, and uh, the committee voted unanimously to reduce that line item. So reflecting the sentiments of my subcommittee, I will be voting against this motion. Yes, Representative I thought Representative Tice was been talking about the DPW piece. Perhaps the, I'm, I'm confused. Perhaps the, um, you can involve the county administrator to explain to me. Let me explain. Let me explain. But what the, the DPW line item that I'm looking at here was 105915 and it was reduced to 44683 which is, I understand, a difference of $61. Yeah, I'm not questioning the reduction in the, the, the number. Why? I'm asking, Representative Tice would have said there was a, a, a loss of staffing or equipment. I'm trying to, this is the replacing that again. I'm trying to get an opinion from the administrator. Okay. That was my question. Okay. Yeah, man. So, um, because we've, we've started uh, um, drug and alcohol programs and, and, and other programs in the jail that require inmates to to attend classes, and they may be as long as three hours long. Um, they're not able to come out as often as they used to. Um, when I first got here in 2015, there may have been eight, 10, 12 inmates out there working on the, on the land. Um, it's been going down since, um, and lately we've been getting one inmate, maybe two at the most, because of the programming. So we thought a skid steer with a snow remover um, would reduce a lot of inmate labor that we rely so heavily on um, as opposed to um, actually getting more full-time bodies in to replace those inmates. You know, being a little cost-effective utilizing mechanical equipment, sort of like the, the mechanized infantry. Um, uh, so that's, that's, that's the thinking we were going on, that if we would uh, 
utilize uh, mechanical devices as opposed to labor, it'd be less costly. That's all. Yes. So the, the addition of the uh, subcommittee that included that thinking um, would nullify this recommendation. Yes. Um, they said maybe next year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I found my piece of information I was looking for. The uh, commissioner's budget included seven thousand dollars for hay wagon. So I would ask the representative if she actually meant to move ninety-eight thousand nine hundred fifteen dollars to simply add back the skid steer. I would be happy to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Draw your second. Yes, I'll draw the second. New number. Uh, the correct number would be nine eight nine one five. Is that your motion, uh, Representative Tyson? Yes. I move that we amend this line item, which was um, uh, sorry, this line item. Um, which has disappeared. Zero nine four. Nine four zero zero nine three. Four one zero zero nine four. Okay. To a total of ninety eight thousand nine hundred and fifteen. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Would you like to clarify the motion in a few words so we all know where we are now? That was my motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. I believe what the motion was, or I know what the intent was. The intent was to add back in uh, enough of uh, an appropriation to cover the purchase of a skid steer, given the fact that the Department of Public Works is probably going to have as much work to do removing snow in the future as it is currently having in the present, and due to the fact that they um, have reduced manpower available from the jail. To do so. Thank you. Representative Cordell? Uh, yes, I, I don't think we've discussed the uh, DPW budget yet. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. uh, We're in capital expenditures. Right. Um, but uh, is there any additional <coughs> staff time included in the DPW budget? Uh, uh, there are three part time summer uh, helpers that we're looking at to help mow around the complex, preferably, uh, you know, high school, seniors in high school or, or some college age kids. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's minimal, just to do the mowing. Any other questions? Seeing none, we'll call the roll to, um, to accept the amendment. Mm -hmm. Accept the amendment. Change the number to 98,915 to permit the skid steer. So, call the roll. Representative Tyson? Yes. Clerk of the voting no. Uh, Representative Como? Nay. Representative Cordelli? No. Representative Crawford? No. Representative Knark? No. Representative McDonald? No. Representative Marsh? No. Representative Nelson? No. Representative Woodcock? Yes. And the chair? Yes. to three motion fails. We are back to the... We're back to 409564. Okay, we are back to the original amendment of 409564. Uh, we had the original motion was made. Yes, without the amendment. Yes, without the amendment. Yes, so we're back to the original. Oh, did I see the motion? I am sorry, Clinton I'm sorry. We're back to the original uh, motion of 409564. Uh, would you like to call the roll, please? Representative Tyson. Yes. Clerk Representative Como? Aye. Representative Cordelli? No. Representative Crawford? Yes. Representative Canark? Yes. 
Representative McDonald's? Yes. Representative Marsh? Yes. Representative Nelson? Yes. Representative Woodcock? Yes. And the chair? Yes. Ten to one, motion carries. Thank you. Madam Chair, I need to be leaving to get to a meeting, so. Yes, uh, we addressed the long term debt, but not the interest expense. Yep. Was that, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah, it's the TAN note and the water system interest, um, 9100, I think. I'm in the park over that one, that's fairly possible. What page is that? If they're paying the bond off early, will that interest expense change? Sure. Look, yeah, um, yeah, I think it goes away, doesn't it? Or is this the other one? Well, <laughs> no, this is, this is the case. That says for the tax this and the, 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 the water system. system. And uh, uh, the water system part might go away depending on what time of the year it is paid off. Right. Gone next year. Right, it'll be gone next year. I'm not sure where. where it, I think it's due in June, so. I mean, if anything, we'll have to pay half of it. Or a little bit more. So we will, but we won't know what that is. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay
Yeah, I think people would like to have, we have five minutes just to get a drink of water and the whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What I would like to, uh, everybody back. Uh, what I what I think I would like to do is we'll we'll do the county extension and the um, and the sheriff because we, we do need to we have an issue with the with the uh, cars and then we'll maybe recess until next week because because our, our numbers are getting low and I know people are getting hungry and I don't want low blood sugar issues. And then that, that lets people know that you don't have to stay if you're not part of the sheriff or, or the cause we need we need oh no a lot so we need eight people to stay. So two and two and we, we, we still will have the meeting though of uh, the sheriff and jail subcommittee that will go on right after this. We will take a little bit of break so people can eat their lunch and then we'll convene. But that's going to be a relatively short meeting. Okay, so when I, when I suggest then that we not do the sheriff's yeah. since the committee is going to be meeting. Oh, well, no, we no, no, that's something different. Yes, we, we, we need the sheriff's uh, committee to. That budget. Right. And we're not going to be changing, uh, we're not addressing the budget, we're addressing the long term. Yeah. This is a different issue. It's not the budget. So, okay, so if we do the, um, well, why don't we put the county, the county extension and cooperative extension? Can I chair, Madam Chair? Yes, my committee, Madam Chair. So, I would move that we appropriate. $277,389 um, for uh, UNH Cooperative Extension. And I just want to make, I just want to look at my print and want to make sure it's matching with my other one. Uh, page right here. Right here. Right here. Mm -hmm. Page one. Should be 12. Seven seven three eight nine. That's correct. Is there a second to that? provides a lot of services um, bringing the research from the university down to the people in the county for their use and benefit. Um, we get a, um, a request was made to the um, commissioners uh, to increase the 4-H worker who works with youth and the reason for that was because um, those programs teach resiliency for youth. Um, the Cooperative Extension did provide us with um, data, that evidence that demonstrates that. Um, the commissioners recommended increasing um, that position to full time, I believe. Um, yes. And, um, so the, the committee was in favor. Are there any further questions? We'll call the roll, please. Yes, excuse me, Commissioner Babson has a Oh, yes. sorry. Thank you. Totally missed that. Totally missed that. And just to open this, I'm on the Cooperative Extension Advisory Board. 
but I just want to let the delegation know that we received a very nice letter from the Conway School District asking us to support the um, cooperative extension and the work they've done with the food nourishment program um, in the elementary schools. Thank you. We just got it, so you don't have I, oh, I have a copy. Yeah, of it. Somebody yeah. sent it to me. I did. It was it's, it was very nice. Joy Gaggs and also the presentation that we had was very helpful. Mm. Yes, Representative Bavlin. Just wondering if the um, cooperative extension does goes outside of Conway to other schools, and if that's possible, how would they would get in touch with them to have those kinds of programs? Yes, would you like to speak? Yeah, well, um, we go to uh, any town in the, in the county. So, um, you know, we've worked with the, um, in Conway, but uh, Joy Gagnon, the program that we just mentioned there, have been uh, down in Wakefield. They're currently at the Anosophy doing a program right now. Joy and I are scheduled to actually start the program in in a couple weeks. Um, so, uh, and they can contact our office and we can get uh, whether they're nutrition programs, forage youth development programs, or any of our other programs as well. Yes? I think that would be excellent to put on the county website. Oh, we have a link on our website. I guess we can link back to the extension website on our county site. Let's do that. I'll make Thank you for that. Any other questions? Call the roll. Representative Tyson. Yes. Department of Voting. Yes. Representative Como. Aye. Representative Cordelli. Yes. Representative Crawford. Representative, excuse me, Knark. Yes. Representative McDonald. Yes. Representative Marsh. Representative Nelson. Yes. Representative Woodcock. Yes. And the chair. Yes. To zero, the motion passes. We're very close. Okay, thank you. So I'd like to go to the sheriff's department. I'm finding that on page five. It helps us. Five through six. And um, I get it. So I move that we accept one six nine seven five four four for the sheriff's expenses. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Representative Woodcock, would you like to speak to your motion? I think it's all rather self-explanatory. We and the report that I made the last time, I went over the reason we made some changes because the. Uh, but the initial commissioner's budget had been set before we had a number of the actual information coming in toward the end of the year. Um, there were some things that were tied to contracts. There were things that we reflected the uh, new phone contract that changed things. And um, we as a committee felt that we needed on line 095 on the firearms training that we wanted to increase that some. We felt it was appropriate to have more firearms training. <laughs> Otherwise, no, there, there would be nothing else to say. Are there any further questions or comments? Thank you. Let me talk. Okay. <coughs> well, I, I saw the no, hand go on. Okay. okay, I, I, I didn't hear that. That's okay. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes. I believe we're supposed to be given an explanation about vehicles, changes in the vehicles. The vehicles, you know, actually, I think those are, it, it's not a change. Um, it, it was it was a purchase. Would you like to explain it? Um, you already approved it in, in, in the capital. It's in the capital. Yep. Um, 80,000. Uh, the sheriff came to us, uh, wanted to lease three more vehicles. But then we looked at purchasing, and we found that we could save uh, six, seven, eight thousand dollars a year just in interest alone on on the lease. So the commissioners decided we should be purchasing the vehicles and not leasing them. So, thank you. Yes. The um, those kind of capital expenditures would be. <coughs> well to have another revolving account for those purchases because they come up every year. I think that would be another place that we could look into expanding that area, especially for vehicles. To save a little bit every year 
to purchase. Well, I don't know if the sheriff wants to buy vehicles every year, though. I think he's just about done, aren't you? <laughs> for a few years. For a couple of years. But Should I mean, be done. Something that we could definitely look for sure. for the future. Yeah. It makes sense if you're the whole county, not just the one department. We do have other vehicles for other, other yeah. departments. Okay. Other, so, seeing no further comments or discussion, can you call the roll? Representative Tysorst. Yes. Clerk will be voting yes. Representative Como. Yeah. Representative Godelli? No. Representative Knerk? Yes. Representative McDonald's? Yes. Representative Marsh? Excuse me. Uh, Representative Delson? Yes. Representative Woodcock? Yes. And the chair? Yes. Seven to one. Motion passes. Yes. I'm sure if we could, you want to do their revenue or do you want to hold that for them? Why don't we wait until we do all the revenues together? Got it. So, uh, I'm assuming uh, next week, next Monday, just like the whole thing was before. Somebody dispatch it, quite a sure. That's good. Go ahead. Yes, I would do that. Yeah, that we can do dispatch. Not quite 1.30, so that's good. Cool. Um, yeah. But basically, it is yeah. dispatch. I'll have to walk by one thirty. Point of order, yeah. The dispatch is. Uh, Point of order, Madam Chair. Yes. Without the uh, quorum person in, if she leaves the room, can she vote? And that will leave you can only do one short. No, there's eight. We, have eight. we, we, we still there. have it barely. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're eight of us. That's why we called them. <laughs> She's been nine here. But she's, she's, she's coming. She's returning right now. Okay. We've just been requested we do a dispatch center since we're moving. Okay. Basically, with dispatch, the same thing. I reported it on the previous meeting. There's nothing that has changed since that time. Um, again, there were a few corrections. Excuse me, Representative. Can you oh, make the motion. Yes, I am sorry. The motion that is to accept a, uh, uh, for dispatch, 805,896. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Representative Woodcock, the second. Okay, thank you. Sorry. That's okay. So, what I just said, <laughs> really no change. Um, and uh, that, again, there were a few changes that we did some corrections due to incomplete data. Ultimately, even though we added a few things and subtracted, we came up with $100 of the commissioner's initial budget. Um, so, that's what the number is 805 896. Are there any questions? Mm -hmm. Are there any other call the roll? Representative Tyshurst? Yes. Clerk will be voting yes. Representative Como? Aye. Representative Cordali? No. Representative Clark? Yes. Representative McDonald? Yes. Representative Dawson? Yes. Representative Woodcock? Yes. And the chair? Yes. <laughs> Delegation coordinator agreement. Do you want to hold that until next time, or do yes. you all have you all had a chance to see it? Or do you want we can hold it till everybody's here? Let's do it next. Yes. Just, I, I have. I, I, thought, I didn't know if this should be done at the same meeting. We approved the minutes. Jail sheriff dispatched the second set of minutes, and I found an error after this. So we need to correct that. Is that best if it's done on the same day? Yeah. Why don't you do it? Okay. It's a very simple thing, um, and that is that. It was brought up, picked up by Eagle Eye uh, Superintendent, and that is that we had uh, set, I had recorded incorrectly in the notes that we had added, that this all had to do with actual contingency fund and the medical expenses. And I had remembered we had taken 15000 out of the contingency fund, got rid of that, and put it back in the 120 for 135 
that was an error uh, in my original notes. It indeed was 130 was the amount. So we were going to be increasing the line point, the 0.025 line to 130. So that just needs to be corrected. so that the minutes are right. We'll approve this next okay. time. We can just recess. And, and well, now we have to close. Okay. Right, so the, the, the final uh, minutes, will the, the final uh, number would be 335,620. Wait a minute. Uh, three million. Three million. Three billion. <laughs> <laughs> I, I missed say, a comma. The, uh, somebody uh, right. 904. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Three, I just said it wrong again. Three million. Three million nine four five. Six two zero. That is the new total. Three nine four five six two zero. Yes, three nine four five six two zero. Now the math makes sense. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Sorry. So that that was an error, in, and it's my error of transcription. That is what we had decided. I went back to the original notes, and it was incorrect. So I want to move that we can amend the minutes of that minute, uh, meeting, February 11, 2019, to reflect that. Thank you. Second, okay. sir. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. Thank you. So we're going to put that out. So, um, is there any any public comment before I close up? Yes. Um, Madam Chair, if I might, uh, we need a member of the delegation to be on the grant uh, approval committee. So if sometime between now and your next meeting, you can. A volunteer or choose someone to be on the grant review committee, I would have greatly appreciate it. Okay. And how frequently will that meet? Or Excuse me? How frequently will that meet so I can let them know the uh, expectation? We only meet as needed when there is a grant application permitted or presented, and we go over it to make sure it's appropriate for the county. Thank you. I will take care of that. Is there anything else to come before the meeting that people? Like to discuss questions, then we'll meet. We'll convene again. We'll meet again next Monday. At, oops, we can't. We can't. It has to be published at least seven days. Oh, that's right. So I would have to make it two weeks. Or a Friday. What would What would you prefer? The medicine, uh, Friday or or Monday? You prefer Friday? Friday? Can we adjourn this somehow? Not adjourn it. Can we do this? Recess. Yeah, recess. Yeah. But, oh, that's right. We're talking about noticing. Yes, but the recess was that. If we, we recess, do, recess? Is that, do we have to re-notice? We, uh, do we have a parliamentary? You know. I, I don't think the seven days. I'm, I'm not sure. I have to look that one up. Do you have the answer? I have the answer. Oh, good. We have oh, the answer. Have Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you're right. Okay. You've got an answer. Again. Representative Avalani is going to answer it for if us. If we are going to recess, we have to recess either at the call of the chair or to another date, or we have to adjourn. <laughs> so we just need to be clear that we have another date or a time in mind. Okay. So that's what I was saying. If I recess to next Monday, do we, if will that work, or do we have to have We have to have a notification of seven days for a delegation meeting for the budgetary issue. So that brings us where we were. Would you prefer the Friday or the following Monday? I won't be a Friday. Madam Chair? be a Friday. If people prefer. Yes. Um, so, one is my understanding was that yes, if we recess, we would not need to know this again because we're just continuing, like if we recess for five minutes. But I'm not going to argue that. Um, I would just say that I do have another legislative commitment on Friday the 15th. Well, what's, I don't have my calendar in front of me. What is? Uh, there's one on the wall. Oh, there you go. Well, two so, weeks is the 18th. No, I don't want to go that far. I want to, um, we're at the 4th. I, no, I was thinking more the 8th or the 11th. What about the Monday the 11th? Oh. If you recess. If I recess, Monday the 11th gives us seven days, doesn't it? If, you, if it goes in the paper tomorrow. Okay. Okay, so I'd have to make it... Um, the 15th. If you don't need it, it have to be advertised if you're just recessing and reconvening. I don't think so. 
Well, that's what if I was asking. Yeah, and you're starting a new property. Right, but that's what I was asking. Yeah, that's what I was asking. The recess doesn't need but, notification. And I can't think of any reason why you can't do that. I'm looking across the table. <laughs> well, I can't because, either, but with the public recess. Well, well, I would let the public know, but you might, might not be able to get it in the paper for nine days. But if we put it on the, the website and, and post it all around the county. So I would have it just for good measure, if you wish. Still send it out to all the boards of selectmen. Yeah, send it to everybody. Still website. Still post it here in the post office. So if we did Friday the 15th, that gives you that gives you time to put it all over the place, and we'll recess. But but if we do it as recess, couldn't we still do all that and do it on the 11th? The 11th. I just as soon do it the 11th. Have it done so that we can yeah. for you to all know where you are and what your funds are. Yes. You, you can meet with everyone. I won't be here the 15th, so. Oh, good. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's recess the meeting until the 11th. Right. Okay. And we'll still give notifications to people. And we will do we will do all the notifications that we can. So we will start at 9:30 on the 11th. Um, March 11th. We, but we should be done by noon. We don't have a lot left to do. So we will recess this meeting until the 11th, Monday. At 9.30. Okay. So that should get us our five minutes. Oh, the, the snow date, I guess, would be the James Okay, and again, uh, jail, dispatch, sheriff, let's just take five minutes and then just reconvene here to get back to work. If that's good, yeah. I mean, or do you need to Huh? Yeah, well, I'm going to eat my sandwich. Well, he's all done. Well, your revenue's not done. I, I, I had such an email I sent out. I said, bring your lunch. Double the revenue. Or actually, we can eat Yeah, and then you walk in there. Oh, that's true. The reason we can't eat